Uh, so we, do we do the uh, explicit content? Yeah, yeah, there might be a swear word yeah. coming. We apologise. Welcome along. This is Forty Twenty Live, uh, live on YouTube, Facebook, uh, and around the around the world on the old internet as well. Oh, and uh, on the podcast. Yeah. yeah. Normally, we have an extra bit for the podcast <coughs> listeners, but um, tonight, um, what we normally like to do, you can see, no Phil tonight. He's um, he's been banned. No, so much punishment worse than that. Ah, well, what? what? Well, you you tell him what he's been done. Uh, well, he's uh, been done for use of flares. Not the ones you throw on the field, but uh, but the one he wears in the 1970s. So he's banned, we've banned him. And he's and a punishment. punishment. Yeah, he's had to go to Leeds Rhinos end of season two, which of course we all thought was in June. Hey! It's a bit harsh. Hey. Hey, April! Anyway, we've got a guest in. Brave move, I think, getting Johnny Davison on because obviously the cricket's been on. And you, you uh, well, actually, before we go there, have you got that voicemail? That, look, me the up. legend has been in touch with John. When was this then, Ledge? When did you get in touch with John? I think it was a was a day one after David Warner had gotten out. You, you like to go early. Huh? Oh, you, your wife told me that as well. You like to go early. Oh, hey, yeah, calm down. <laughs> David, so just play. Well, it. Oh, right. sure. Let's give me a minute. Give me a minute. <laughs> yeah. So, so he, before he sent, he sent you a nice voice. Before, moment, before I've got some I've got some tissues for for Scoey to dry his eyes after <laughs> Old Trafford. Oh yeah. Have you got any sandpaper? Hey. I believe yeah. Mike Atherton's taken all that. Ah. Uh, hey. Get, get, well, enjoy your moment. Yeah, yeah. Your moment. Oh, yeah. I always do. Yeah. So this is a message that the legend sent you then. Got the words wrong. Right? knew the words. You just making that up, but you're not even singing the right words. I like a couple. And you might have had a couple. It was about 11 o'clock on Thursday morning. Yeah, did you, did you, did you I'm return, sir? I've had a couple. The best bit's coming up. I think oh, the best, so the best bit is the, the, the best bit is the bar for now. Just, you know, nice and chipper at the end. <laughs> Oh, that went well. Oh. Uh, welcome along. Uh, wow, it, Friday the 13th, it's going to be pretty unlucky for someone, isn't it? At the bottom end of Super League London. <clears throat> Actually, before we start, we need to revisit last week, don't we? Because last week, we were going to have to um, provide it. Why are we on it? I'm sorry. Right, okay. I was, uh, you told me I was going to have to apologise to you this week and all your legion of whole KR supporting friends. Because I labelled Hull Kingston Rovers bottlers. Can <coughs> I point you to some comments from the Hull Kingston Rovers coach in the League Express? Uh, da, 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 da. Hull KR Tony Smith has questioned the league structure once again before admitting that tension got to his players in their defeat to London on Friday. So Hull KR bottled it, and that's in the words of their own coach. <coughs> so are you now going to apologise to me? I mean, to be honest with you, the word tension is uh, a different word to, to bottling, to be honest with you. And no, the you, tension got to his place. Uh, uh, no, you are not getting an apology. You didn't give me one last week. It's, hold why? On. Because hold I was on. right. Oh, no, hold on. You didn't give me one last week for the great performance and character performance against the Catalans. So you're not getting. You're not getting an apology. You're not, you're I'm not, not being rude, right? We've even got a token. We could. We us four <laughs> would give them a game these days. True. I'll tell you what, we would give him a game. Well, it's five. We've got a yeah, Philip team, haven't we? No, sorry, I forgot. Phil with his knee bandage. wearing his bandage? Phil with his knee bandage and kicking oh, game. Oh, if, if, if he's wearing his bandage, the back is minus four. <laughs> um, but no, you, you owe me an apology. You're not getting one. You're not getting one. They are in the mix. They are. If, the if mix. London beat Wakefield and have beaten them twice already, mm. Hulk Earth are in the mm. box seat to get relegated. Well, to be honest with you, I can't, uh, I can't debate that, if I'm honest with you. And... Uh, but I think first of all we've got to give great credit to uh, to London because when you look at that when you look at, at that side and when you look at the way they play the great thing about it is it's simple basic effective rugby league the forwards run hard and straight and direct the half backs play off there they play without vision and awareness and on the outside backs have got plenty of pace on there you look at them wingers them wingers are pretty good out there you know and uh, Morgan from St Helens he's settled in very well he hasn't sucked all season you know going from the uh, the top of the league to the bottom of the league from there. They have just been brilliant in the team spirit, what they show. But we've said it all season, haven't we? What London do, they play for the full 80 minutes. They don't know when they beat, it doesn't matter who they played again. And, and I've, said, I've said in a column again today, I said it six weeks ago, if Danny, if Danny Ward doesn't get the coach of the season now, then I think it's, it's a travesty for what he's done this year for London, what them London players have done. 
I think all of us here said maybe they may not win a game, they might win two, three maximum. Sensational, great team spirit, and uh, yeah, I know we do the predictions, what around about 10 to 8, <coughs> but London will beat Wakefield on, on Friday. I think Ian Watson might have something to argue in terms of the coach of the year, but I think the key the key point with London it was the start of last year when you tipped them to finish, I think, 11th. 10th. All right, and since then, you know, you yeah, inspired and I, them. And, uh, uh, you know, John, proved you wrong. John, and I gave my reasons, and also as well, congrats, congrats, because I've had plenty of stick as well from the White Haven fans. The White Haven chairman sent me the video of them celebrating because this year, many, many congratulations. You start charging these guys. Many, many, many <laughs> congratulations to White Haven, because I said White Haven this year would finish six. You know, so many congratulations to them. Definitely. But yeah, I said my reasons for that because, you know, with John Henderson leaving to go to Warrington, how would the players react to, to Danny and also to Jim Langley? But hey, listen. They're within plays each day, every day of the week, and they know exactly what response can get. They handled the pressure against Toronto, you know, in, in that playoff game from there to get them into Super League. And this year, well, they've been sensational, and they're enjoying it. And, and when I talk about when I talk about pressure, what does pressure on you? You've got to enjoy pressure. You've got to enjoy pressure with a smile on your face, and that's what London do. Well, that's you, you're talking about Danny Ward. I don't think anyone could have predicted the impact he's had in in two years, mm. but. He comes in, he's smiling, he's cracking well, jokes. You know he just in, the players are happy well, that they want to well, play. Well, for well him. let me tell you this as well. Dan is exactly the same as his old man David Ward. Because I can tell you, when I talk about David Ward, I get goosebumps because you know for Ward and me as a coach, and all the players will tell you exactly the same. We would have ran over hot coals, we would have ran over broken glass for David Ward because of what he brought to us. Not just his players, but he brought to the dressing room. He wanted us to go out there and express himself, enjoy yourselves. If the press is on, it's not going well, keep doing it with a smile on your face. And that's exactly what London are doing from there. And that's why us as players, with David Ward, Danny does exactly the same as his old man, just lets his players go out there and enjoy that pressure. Brilliant. Okay. Does Danny Ward know about coaching at cricket? I could maybe do with him, but uh, instead of that Aussie, that like useless Aussie, yeah, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. So, as far exactly. as, as, far the, as the one that went to the World Cup. And as far as getting an apology, my flute. As far as getting an apology, at this moment in time, Mr. Wilson, you can sing for it. No, well, fair enough. Uh, my uh, beloved Salford won at Leeds. Oh. Leeds in crisis. Leeds well, they are. Well, we've got a new coach now. We'll talk about Richard Agar yeah. shortly as well. Uh, I've got a few facts and figures on uh, Richard's start to life, and is he going to be the right man? I think he's the right man at this time for at Leeds. We'll, we'll have a chat with the guys about that. Get in touch on Twitter at forty twenty live. Get in touch on the comments on YouTube, loads of you doing that. Get in touch on Facebook as well. We're after shares, aren't we, this week? We want people we? to share. Yeah. yeah. We'll give away a copy. Is that the, is that the latest? Yeah, well, the new one's out next week. The so. new one's out next week. We'll give you a copy of the... Uh, we'll do a draw. We'll give we'll give five away. I'm going to... Oh, Phil's not here. We can, we can give him five away. <laughs> we'll give five away. Don't tell Phil. Whatever you do, don't tell Phil. Uh, we'll give five copies away. Is that Leeds Rhino's Cup? Uh, no. No. Uh, We'll give five copies away of the latest 420 magazine. We're after shares, retweets of the tweet uh, with a link on and everything, uh, if you could do that. Uh, and if you uh, subscribe to the podcast, leave us a nice review, because we've, got, we've yeah. got, actually got quite a lot of subscribers yeah, now. We're quite pleased with that. We're in uh, the Indian rugby charts this week. Are we? Yeah. Big in India. Big, we're big in, in India, India lads. Yeah. We're getting, we're getting hey, listen, I'll tell you what as well, fellas. I was uh, just doing a bit of shopping in Morrison's yesterday. By the way... Did you have your clothes? I, I, yeah, yeah, I didn't have my dressing yeah, on. Yeah, have your dressing but, on. But... One of the main managers came up to me, you know, he said, hey, it's coming. It's coming in. It's coming. <laughs> yeah, put some <laughs> clothes on or else. No, he, he said to me, oh, it's going, uh, do you come in often? So I said, yeah, I just, I just live up the road. I, I use Morris. He said, oh, you know, I've heard about we, we are, uh, your great dressing gown. Come in any time what you want because I absolutely love your show. That 4020, it's the best show going from there. And to be honest, I mentioned a little bit about sponsorship as well, but it wasn't forthcoming with that. But, uh, Can't you just do as a half an hundred weight to pick and mix? Well, yeah, that would be handy. Sausage that would be very handy, yeah. But even, even, even one of the top men at Morrison's yesterday, he absolutely loves the show as well. So, yeah. you know, oh, hey, hey, hold on. Hold get on. in there. Now, you know Shaw Wright was banned last banned week. week. Banned last week. Um... Have you read out that co- have you read out that comment that someone put on, on YouTube? Someone well, put this, someone... I know we're explicitly tanked, but I still not saying that. Well, yeah, but you can leave a swear word off. Miserable so and so. Someone actually said it. The show was far better without that miserable so and so on it. It was a bit harsh, isn't it? Well, yeah. I, know, I know we're all about uh, fan engagement interaction. I was at Hangley on Friday, and I'm walking through the main gates, and this this guy comes up to me. He was probably in his late fifties, early sixties. It had. Let's say a few pints. Yeah. He goes, you're you're on that that forty twenty. He goes, yeah. He goes, Scoey is an idiot. <laughs> Time to stop eating biscuits. <laughs> Best thing I've ever done. Anyway, anyway, anyway. you know, you know, oh, oh, you know, miserable. Sorry, yeah. numpty. You called you a numpty. You know, numpty miserable idea. idea. Miserable idea at Warrington last week, posing for selfies.
Wow. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good for you. Yeah. With fans, yes. he were getting asked for photos and he were taking selfies. Explain yourself. Okay. Is the new Explain George Explain yourself. Mm. Well, sensational. <laughs> oh, don't touch that, don't touch that, Rich. Just, just let that go through to the keeper. Also, uh, so, 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 you just had a big play of biscuits. <laughs> you wanted to smash so, it so, so that leads for us, that leads for us coming in for eating my biscuits. I'm there on Friday. I should be there around, around about six o'clock. Walk you through the gates, come and say hi, will you? And I'll explain why I'm an idiot, because the biscuits are absolutely lovely. There you yeah. go. Well, well, what about you? Not, then you're not eating the biscuits, why are you not idiots? I think you've answered your own question there. That'd be good, the press box at Leeds and Wines on uh, Friday be empty, will not it? I'm there, the big guy. No, I'm, I'm the big guy. I have to go yeah, there as the well. Uh, you really are Leeds, if you're not in Ibiza. I've been cast aside. Uh, what are you talking uh, about? Loads of people yeah. uh, getting in touch. Well, Toby's been on. He says the press box seemed happy when London went over at Warrington on Friday. There were cheers, Mark. There were cheers in the press box watching the, the try from Is that Andy had his picture taken? No, no, it's Toby. Oh, is that Toby? Toby? Yeah. Um, that implies that, implies that that we're being spied upon now. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say, I did cheer, and I felt quite bad to Michael Carr because obviously I don't want Wakefield to get relegated. But I did feel quite bad. But I cheered because I'm happy. For London. People don't understand journalists generally cheer for the story. Yeah. And that is the best story. Yeah, if London is. lost, the story was, was dead. dead. Yeah, it you was want dead. you want the greatest angle and the best story. It and was that, dead. That's an amazing story. Uh Steve says, Why is there a loving for London above Wakefield, Hulkow, Huddersfield? Well, let's put it this way. Mm. London spent far less money than the others. Mm. They've outperformed the others in terms of expectation. Yeah. All the players are leaving and everyone knows they're leaving. They've got the weakest the they've got the weakest squad and they've Predictions. Also, by the way, this is this. Is, let me just say that this is not a London loving. This is quite a simple fact. London have been sensational this year. They've been better than Kia. They've been better than Wave. They've been better than twice. And, they, and they've been better than Huddersfield. All right, some of the points are still bottom of the league, but they have been better. And then, so this is not a loving. This is this is appreciating a club that supposedly wasn't going to win any games, maybe two or three maximum, and they've been sensational. So don't be coming on here and saying to us we're loving London. We're appreciating the quality of what London have been. Mm. Johnson Bottle, I couldn't see. I couldn't see that. Um, I watched them against Leeds last week. I couldn't see them winning. On the, I mean, I did say I thought that I hoped they'd win. Uh, I couldn't see it. Just to get them off the canvas, five day turnaround, got them off the floor and got them a win. I mean, did you see how good that opening try was? Mm. Brock, Brock Lamb picks it up off his feet, mm. throws it up to G, takes it full pelt. Beautiful try. Yeah, played some good stuff. So it is all in the balance. It's going to be an unlucky evening. Who do you think? Uh, Toby said, I think the whole ground heard. Well, we did cheer. You know, <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to lie. Like you said, you want the underdog to keep on yeah. punching. It might fall, it might end in tears yeah. on Friday night. Wakefield might batter them. That might happen. You know, but I'm not so sure that they will. Well, There's four of them in the mix. Yes. One of them will go. Well, we've got a poll. We have. A great everyone does polls these days. Um, who is going down? 40% at the moment. Hull, Kingston, Opelonga Rovers. <laughs> London Broncos, 29%. Huddersfield Giants, 17%. Wakefield, 13 uh, I had a look, actually. Wakefield, the odds on Wakefield to go down, i.e. the other three teams winning, is 12 to 1. Mm. Surely, wait, you just got to go to the bookies, haven't you? Put a couple well, of hundred grand on You say on, that, but of course, it? that's illegal. Well, of course it is. Yeah, you uh, being facetious. So Wakefield can lose, but still... Yeah, they can yeah, yeah. still yeah. stay up. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be tough for Hulk out to beat Salford in the form that Salford are in. So. Seven... I haven't won seven games in a row since 1976. No, if we, if, no, if we, oh, oh, sorry. But, but if, the points if, difference. You no, know, but if Wakefield lose, Hulkia and Huddersfield win, Wakefield go down. But do you think Hulkia will beat Salford in the form that Salford are in? I don't think they will. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, we must yeah, say, yeah. what I must say. I suppose form does go a bit out the window in these kind of What I must games. say, and we will, we'll talk about it in a bit, is that's it. Wakey played pretty well at, at Warrington. Warrington for 40 minutes were brilliant. And then after that, Wakey were by far the better team. I thought they were a bit unlucky not to get a result, but we'll have a chat about that. We did ask a different question on Friday night, which has been running all weekend. Who do you want to finish bottom of Super League? Notice the word bottom, not relegated, because we believe in conspiracies here. <laughs> London, 10%. Hulkings Rovers, 29%. Wakefield, 24%. Huddersfield Giants, 38% of the listener want them out of Super League. Get rid of oh, the Giants this night. Well, that's a bit harsh. That's not me. That's of course, listen to this show, you know. I'm trying to encourage you. It's not my fault. Yeah, very good. Uh, keep getting in touch. Uh, we will have a chat about that and many, many things. Uh, that Scully just been fined 50% of his fee, which is... Uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see. 
Uh, we're also going to talk about Jake Connor because uh, I thought he was a disgrace on Thursday night. Yeah. I said it the week before, Scotty. If he plays at six, all FC are going no way. Now they played Kelly at six. They might as well have played you at centre because Jake Connor for me was a disgrace. Mm. What do you make of him? What do you, I know you spoke to Radis, so again, you've got to be careful what you're going to say, but is there any danger you turn on to silent or are just going to keep on at at your messages? By the way, James has been on and he's done our work for us because he's pinpointed the moment in the programme when he said, challenge going to sit in a back and look at peas. So I can get the clip out. Thanks for that, James. 10th of December, 120 minutes, 124 minutes. Well, I, um, I, I want to know if all them all FC fans that have been slating me for saying that they're rubbish and won't make the playoffs uh, are going to come back. You know, because they quote you to you, you get that. Oh, right? as a journal, you yeah. say something, and they yeah. go back six months ago. Yeah. Oh, you said this six months ago. It's horrendous. I'm going to go back. I should go back and start trolling through this. Mm. But Jake Connor, disgrace, in my opinion, we believe... He had an exchange of words with Matt Minichello as he left the field. Minichello has been quite diplomatic in the uh, <coughs> paper today, saying he's, he's a tight kid, but he's got a lot of work, lot to work on. Number one, he's got to be his attitude, hasn't it? I think also as well. I think it was there for everybody to see, wasn't it? It was. Uh, so let's, let's not, not for the first time. Uh, yeah, listen, let's not let's not put no spin on this. And uh, you know, uh, we all know what happened uh, with Liam, Liam Watts at Hull. You know, uh, Radders gave him one, two, three, four, maybe five, six goals at saying, you know. Listen, you know, we want you to save this club, but you've got to change your attitude, you've got to change whatever you're doing, because the players are getting fed up with it. Anyway, that went. But what I saw there on Friday night, it was quite simple. Whether he's looking to get a, a move away from the club, uh, that, that's, a, that's a talk around the place, but uh, you cannot, you cannot make yourself bigger than the team, you cannot make yourself bigger than the club, because everybody questions the, the, the talent and quality of what Jake Collins is as a player. Don't disagree with that, but also as well, when, when was his last good game? Well, that's what I said to you. That's what I said to you last week. So, when was his last good game? I think when he was at the jungle, the Cass, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, that's ago. three months ago. Yeah. Three, three months ago, at least. He might have played, I hadn't seen him ever. So, yeah, so, like so you look at the consistency, what is he bringing to that side? He wants to play number six, as Mark rightly says, and I'll totally agree with that. When he has played number six, he's been absolutely useless and clueless. So, what is he bringing to Hull at this moment in time? Secondly, when you are playing the great game of rugby league, you know, there's a law in rugby league to say the opposition can tackle you. Every time he gets tackled, he's just, he's just whinging, he's just moaning. You know, so the purpose of what he's bringing to Hull as a club at this moment in time is absolutely zilch. And if it was me, and I've said it in my column uh, today, if it was me, I would find him two which wages for what he did on Friday because he got himself simping. I think he's well had a few words when, when they well, were in. They got Mark's 20 yards down. They got Mark's there, so it's not, it's not the first time from the game from there. And also to the simping from there. For me, he gets fined two weeks wages and he's on the transfer list. We, I'd, I'd want him away from there. I, I would get rid of him at the club. I did the radios, you know, with Paul Cook, like yourself, a former whole player. Cook, he said, Radford's got to get rid of him. He's got. He's now got to get rid of him. Yeah, he's become a problem. They need, they need uh, him out. Absolutely. So, but the big problem in down for Jake Collins... Not a problem. Not a problem of being a rugby league player. Not a problem of being a quality rugby league player. But which club will want him? Can which club? Which club will want him in that dressing room of theirs? Can, I don't think they'll be too. Can good. that though? Can they afford to let him go? Because one of their issues. John wants to bring him to the side at this moment in time. Let, let me finish. One yeah. of the, their issues is creativity, mm -hmm. and particularly around their halves and their, and yeah. their spine. Yeah. On his day, and admittedly that is the issue. There's no consistency right, okay. there. Yeah. But on his day, he is an England player. He is. One of the best players of competition. Right, that, that's, that's so not, that those is, sort of players don't. You that, you've got to think though who you're going to bring. The quality in. of Jake Connor is not in question, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll, I'll, I'll mention about Truman as well playing at Castaway that he played last week. Well, oh, yeah. well, showed him up, right? So yeah, yeah but that, his last game, Jake Connor was what three months ago. That's not good enough. It's like we look at Wakefield. You know, Wakefield they were supposed to get in the top five this year. What they've done, they've won one game in thirteen. When you look at consistency, when you look at your quality players, you've got to get that high up on it week in and week out. You, If you are going to be a quality player week in and week out, you've got to be looking at between 8 and 9 and 10 every week. One bad game in 10. Well, one average game in 10 from there. And Jake Connell at this moment in time, he wants away from Hull, but the way he was on Friday night, as from a playing aspect, a discipline aspect, that's telling me you're getting fined and I'm on, you're on the transfer list. I don't want you at this club. It's like when he played for England last year against New Zealand, he had a great couple of games you know everyone was praising him and like, it's like that's gone to his head and now his attitude now in nearly every game it's shocking it, it is 
So I, I just think they've got to read him the riot act and say, look, this is your, this is your last chance to learn. If it continues, then you, then you've been in. But I don't think that they've got enough quality at that club in those spine positions to get rid of him. But what else played? What else played number six? Yeah, I don't think he's. A, I think he's a fullback. I don't think he's. He's a number a fullback. six. Yeah, I don't. I don't see number six. I think that's one of the issues. He's played one. He's played in the centres. He's played at six. He's never really had a set of position, but I don't think he's mm. Well, I, 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 I said before, I'll tell you what I would play him. I'd play him at loose forward, because you know that bit of anger he's got in him on this sort of thing. It's not big enough. Well, listen, you know with the skill-wise he's got on that footwork and that big, yeah. just, like, just give him a free roll, let him do what he wants on there, and then also as well, when he gives it a little bit to the forward for tackling the one, some of the forwards might just banjo him, he might show up a little bit. Well, 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 I would in, play that respect, forward. in that respect, did Cass do a good job on him? Because Senna Feo was in his yeah. grill every possible ah. time, wasn't he? I thought Senna Lefeo played really well the other night, and, and I thought he'd give him it, and I don't think he liked it. Yeah, but you I, know think that, I think that's a message that any yeah. team that plays, I'll yeah. wind him up and yeah. he'll get off his game. But do you know what? Do you know why Jake Connor? Because, as I say, we used to do it sometimes, uh, like, let's say, like Kelvin Scudder, you know, Kelvin, Kelvin was a handy man. But even when we used to say to Kelvin, you know, oh, you're looking very nice today, Kelvin. Oh, I'll tell you what, you're running very hard. And that wound him up. You get, you get a reaction straight away. So it doesn't matter what you say to him, or oh, if you are aggressive with him, they just react. It's, it's in their DNA, they react. Whatever way, but uh, but even even when he's getting tackled, even by the smallest fellows on the field, he's just absolutely erupting. And as I said, the law in rugby league, you can tackle the opposition, and he doesn't like it. And the other thing with that game on on Thursday, I mean, Albert Kelly, he looked like being on my diet or your diet. He did not look fit at all. I thought he played all right. right to no, go no, his def- you you go down and break some of those tries. His defensive work. His contact and attempt to tackle was woeful. Well, all right, well, well, he, he was a passenger. Right, right. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. And he did not defend, fit. He defended better not. than C. Commander, I thought. I thought Manu <laughs> but also, but, 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 but all right, but all right. Then, but what about the one? What about the number seven? What about? So, yeah, what about well, him? it wasn't a good team performance. Cross okay, I thought, well, Kelly, well, I thought Kelly was particularly poor. No, well, but Kelly was better than Sting. Don't worry about that. Dave mentioned will Connor be at least next year. Has that changed Connor's? Demeanor. Where would he when, play when, at when the story Seriously? came back? Hanson, Luke and Joe Connor. Where is he going to play? I don't know where he'll play. Well, it, 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 well, Le- 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 Leeds won't want him. Leeds won't want him. Leeds won't want him now. Don't worry about that. They won't want him around that club. They won't want him around that dressing room. Not a chance. I'll be oh, I'll be absolutely... I'll be good with me if Leeds sign him. I will. I will. Mm-hmm. Go on. Uh, someone's, someone's been on and saying that... Uh, I don't yeah, like you don't like Hull, yeah, apparently. Steve Bucknell. Mark Lusman appears not to like any Hull teams. Yeah, all FC have underperformed, and I said at the start of the year they won't make the top five. So you You've always been biased against them. It's things. looking like they won't make the top <coughs> five. Barnum are coming through fair play. I also said Hull on their day could win the comp, but for me, a team that's worthy of winning the comp doesn't have a point if it's a minus 107 <laughs> with a winning record and don't lose by 50 odd. You know, it's a, they are a disgrace. They're throwing the towel too easy. <laughs> I've got a question, right? And it, we were told Lee Radford's getting a new deal. Adam Pearson said that on Sky. Getting a new deal, it's not been signed yet. Should he be worried? And I've mentioned this before, Radford. Are they are they playing? They're a team, right? They're not playing for their coach. Why are they so bad? Why did they lose to Huddersfield last week? Huddersfield were decent. You know, they had a goal, they do what they do, they make it the week before. Defended well. They got hammered by Salford, they lose it on to Huddersfield. That Huddersfield result is going to stop them potentially getting mm. in the top five. And then they got a cast, must win game. And to be fair, if we was not got that intercept try Logan, they, they they wouldn't have even been in it at any point of the game, would they? Mm-hmm. So what what are you what do you think, Radford? Do you think he'll sign a new deal? I think I think he will stay because this year, uh, Pearson came out the end of last year. We're gonna we're gonna change all the squad. We're gonna get rid of all these players. He couldn't do that because they were all under contract. Now there's a clean slate. Who's coming in? Fanua. Um, there's a few other players whose mm. name escapes me. Yeah. Yeah. They've made some decent signings. Josh Jones. Josh Jones, yeah. I mean, obviously, Manu's retiring, Minicillo's going. So they've got the Chris Sarte from the Warriors. There is new players coming in. I think he will get the chance to rebuild that squad next year. But in saying that, if they start next season like they've ended this season and started last season, remember, it was... So 13 losses in a row. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, there is going to be pressure on him to, to deliver. But also as well, when you look at the players who they've signed, when you look at the players they've signed, it's going to be the same sort of style of play what they've been doing. Look at the, 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 well, the, the big forwards haven't the signed and for no one else in the wing yet. But all oh, but, oh, that will be... Oh, Manu, Manu, yeah. I mean, but all oh, yeah. oh, that will be for no one, just realistically, he'll, he'll, he'll be batting the ball in from a dummy half a little bit with the kicks over. 
from Steed again. So I just feel as though they need they need a different philosophy and attack with ball in hand, you know. Well, certainly not going to get that with we we uh, with Snead with, with ball in hand because he can't create absolutely nothing. And Albert Kelly is is his contract up or is it, has he resigned? Kelly, I think he's got another year. He's I'm got another sure. year, has he? You I'm know, so sure. so uh, <clears throat> and as I said, as good as what as good as what and what he brings to that side in Danny Alwyn, I just feel as though they need a hooker with more explosiveness and more variation around that rookie. I think uh, Jordan Johnston is, you know, they, what they're hoping, I guess, to provide that, whether he he comes off the bench or whether he, you know, competes for that mm, starting spot. Yeah. But, yeah, I think you're right. They do need to go in a different direction. Yeah, they, do, they need yeah. a different philosophy. A game day philosophy, they do. I'm just getting over John's comment from earlier. Uh, some comments <laughs> from... I, I can't believe you said that. Some comments from people on Facebook. Uh, Karen says, Jake isn't the only one not performing, just those passion and his frustrations in a different way. It's like telling these teammates to go forth and multiply. Yeah. Uh, Tim says, my question is, why is Lee Bradford allowing Connor to waste his talent? What happened to man management? Uh, Woody, sorry, it's pretty clicked off. Woody says, all genius players have flaws. There's a long list of them playing Super League. Hull and Jake need to get it sorted. Uh, Dave genius says, no, I think he, he is on his. He is on his when he wants, isn't he? But like you said, he's that but X factor. To get to that level, to get to that, you know, Sinfield, Cameron Smith, Jonathan Thurston, you have to perform and win things, and he's not. He's not performed. Dave no. says Connor to stay and amend his ways. <coughs> Jake has to help himself. Uh, Mark says Connor believe in his own hype. Stronger man management required from Radders and Andy says nobody likes Hull, not even people from Hull. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. See, if we'd have said that, we'd have got into trouble. Kyle says, Hull are forever signing all these big players. Every year they are inconsistent. When does a transitional period stop? Hull need to uh, find a Darrell Clark type player. The interesting thing about Hull, uh, after looking at the Great Britain squad last week, there must be a reason why Zach Hardick is not in and Jamie Shaw is in. And if it is because of whatever's gone on in the past off the field, I think we should be told that. Mm. Because there's, that's obviously the reason Wayne Bennett's not picked him. Yeah, well, someone said we're going to talk about Wigan. We will do yeah. definitely. But why, why is that a problem though? When you've had four or five chances, no, it's, it's just like, come out. Yeah, we'll come out and say yeah. he's not. He's, we're not even yeah. considering selecting him. And I, 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 I think you're right. I think if he's not up for selection, you've got to tell everyone. But I should be. And I honestly, I don't think Jamie Shaw's got the attacking game. I don't. I don't think Jamie Shaw should be in over Hardacre, but I don't think Hardacre has been playing as well as some people think oh, he has. Been playing all right. I think he's been playing alright, but is he the same heartache? He doesn't seem to have that pace, that devastating pace and ability to create like he did in 2017. It looks like that time out of the game, he's still a very good player. I think he's adapting his game as he gets older, but I don't think he's as devastating as he was you know, in his Leeds days or his Cats days. Mm. I think he's going to get a chance to get his hands back on that grand final title this time we'll see we'll chat about Wigan later Ian says we all know what the legends floor is brackets chocolate biscuits exactly Gosh. or brownies you have six brownies in one go we've got the uh, whole FC brownies chocolate rugby balls I've got three brownies three well no I've had two before I've, I've, no, I've had two one's a taster one's a taster <laughs> I've had the right other six everybody, everybody will think I'm an idiot yeah. drinking, drinking. eating all drinking eating all these yeah. actually look alright who sent the Z's on FC I bought I got them cheap I, I, I needed a couple of programs in my collection, so I bought them. That's only a couple of them. How long have been there? There you go. Oh, you know, I've been there a few weeks, but you know, what, what do you make of them? Yeah. The, uh, well, yeah. well, there you go. I'm always a big fan, so Hull FC. Send yeah. some chocolate rugby balls. No, we just slagged you off for 10 minutes, but. Uh, no, we just merely questioned this. Look, they could what? still make the top five. They could still win the grand final. I know I've kind of taken us off on the They could also lose 50 0 at home on Friday. Indeed. I didn't really mean to do this, but Luke says, How is Shawley over Evans? Never mind how. Yes, we mentioned yeah, last week. Yeah, yeah. Levels. yeah. Yeah. Um, Salford in the playoffs. What? Russell Sheepherder. I don't think that's. No, yeah, I think that's name. his name. No. Uh, says there comes a time when every coach has brought all they can to a club. Radders may be at that point. Ooh. I think that's a fair point. I, I think. I think we overlook the fact that sometimes, and you'll know this, go. You've played professional sport. <coughs> sometimes you get sick of hearing the same voice, mm, and you yeah, think, yeah, but this yeah. before, I'm not, you know. I'm yeah, exactly. Yeah. Players, players will decide how long a coach lasts for. No two ways about it. Yeah, yeah, but. I think, no, with Radders, the thing for him is that he's got a great relationship with the chairman. And the chairman knows what Radders brings to the club. He knows he's black and white through and through. But at, at times, 
will wear off. That at times will will run its will run its time from there. But to be so, fair, yeah. though, they have invested in the squad, haven't they? Oh yeah, 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 get yeah. One more going. Oh yeah, I mean, with that, yeah, with the they play. need Super League, the cup. They've got the cup. They've had the cup. With the play, with the players, what they've signed for next year. But again, I just want to see a different philosophy in, in the style of play. I think uh, you you had a tweet which was something we'll be talking about later <coughs> about the the championship. All right, some okay. Top, some top tries in there. Oh yes, yeah. Top, top Has anyone have you seen that? Oh, you got to mention it. I mean, Fellas and Rovers. I know um, we uh, we're not ref bashers, but the incident. Have, have you seen that try? Well, Fellas and scored. There's two, there's two things. Disallowed. Two things we've got to talk about. Fellas and that. A, one that. The coach uh, abused the referee. Oh, I don't know. Uh, and B, Kev's been on, and this uh, goes back to again the. After the match, they had to put out a statement on Facebook. So again, their fans have not behaved. Kev says, what are the RFL going to do about fair a section of their fans? I won't read that bit, but it's funny. Uh, they only have reached 2,500, not 10,000. Why can't they be weeded out and banned? It's shocking and embarrassing. Uh, he goes on to say, I'm expecting RFL fans to be blaming football. They usually do. Our rugby league fans don't usually swear, abuse the op- opposition or officials, or get past the games and then kick off a family game. What a joke. Just like it wasn't the Salford fans who chucked a flare, just some random. Never the true fans. Turned up, some random who turned up from Manchester, not even from the same city, thought, what am I going to do? Bored on a Friday night, or pitch up at Leeds with a flare, chuck it on. Rich, as it I was is, told. It is the action of an idiot, though. Yeah. As yeah, I was told on Twitter, there's a media bias against Salford. Yeah, apparently. from you. Yeah. Well, no, but there's a media conspiracy. Salford, not just John, myself. So, yeah. It's Paul Rowley, isn't it? You've got a thing against Paul Rowley. <laughs> You're not bad at Salford as well, Johnny. <laughs> I quite like Ian Watson and him. I like Watson, I like the club Salford, yeah, it was after But unfortunately, I pointed out, yeah, that the person who, well, A, the person who brought the flare, B, the person who threw the flare onto the pitch, is an idiot. Correct. Because they've just won seven games in a row, they're looking at a good chance to go all the way to the final and great form, but that has marred a fantastic performance. Absolutely. I'd love to know why they do it. I just, I just what's what's the yeah, pig? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something bright yeah. and shiny. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Don't do it. Please. Yeah, I mean, it's good. You know, the club have come out and they 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 criticised it as well. To see how he's criticised. You can argue from a Salford point of view. It's not their ground. So is the onus not on Leeds? How has he got that? How has he got that in? I yeah, can't. I, I go in with all my bags and get searched. I can't just walk in with a flare. We walk in with all kinds of wires and stuff. Yeah, I can't go in with a flare. So how has he got in with a flare? I, I would question that. Maureen's so. been on. Maureen. Come on, Scully. You slammed Cass halfbacks off last week. Jake Drew was incredible. Oh, then here we I go. Cass yeah. was yeah, on, Scully. Yeah. I, I, I tipped Hull to win last week like an idiot. And uh, you could tell after 10 minutes they weren't going to win. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Jake Truman, it yeah. was like so someone had turned the clock back two years. That left Ooh, edge of Cassidy yeah, yeah, looked yeah. like he knew what he was doing. Look, uh, yeah, do you know what? Absolutely loved it. And yeah, it's a, it's a fair call. What's her name? Maureen. Maureen, it's a fair call. But if you're trying to tell me the week before, it was absolutely useless and clueless against St. Helens. Well, I'm thinking that I get to spec Sam, to be honest with you, because him and Jamie Ellis were exactly the same. And this, yeah, Jake Truman, he's a special talent. Yeah, when I saw him when he made his week, we could debut nearly two years ago now. You can see that, but it's all about the consistency of the play. It's no good playing one out of six. No way, mate. He needs to produce that week in and week out. As I keep saying, and I harp on to when I played, I played 40 games this season, and I wanted one poor game in 10. So that's nine. <laughs> nine games out of ten, we hit yeah, an eight in nine and so that's what Jake Truman has to do. That's it's, it's simple. It's consistency in performance. And as Darrell Powell said, it's like an old fashioned standoff, which I can see that even from there. But when the kid wanted the ball in hand, he played away from the rook area, gave himself more time, more space. Hull couldn't handle him, and the combination between him and Ellis was excellent on Friday because Ellis took the responsibility of the kicking game, took the pressure away from Truman. Truman was the main organizer. Sensational, Ellis. Not being a lover of him, to be honest with you, but his game on Friday night, his kicking game was good in his organisation. Did it help that his teammates played well? I think it'd be fair to say, Castleford have performed this year. I I don't think we've, we've, you know, I think Daryl himself would admit that. Mm. They haven't been good. That's the best I've seen them play for a long time. As a forward pack, they're outstanding. As a team, I thought, across the board, I thought they played well. But what did Truman do differently? Was it just because his forwards were really going forward and being aggressive? Why was he back to his best? Yeah, well, his forward made many, but also... The forwards, at the, the forwards against St. Helens put him in great field position, but he was just he was just waiting for the kicking game. He wasn't getting the ball in hand, and he was playing too close to the rook area. 
And people say, well, Scott, what do you mean about the app? Too, you, you, you're too close. Hookers nowadays can pass the ball easy 15, 20 yards. So standoffs, right, should be playing second man out easy away 30 yards from there. Stand a little bit deeper and you can put the defence in three minds. It's easily done because I've done it myself. It's easily, easily done. And that's what Truman did. Gave himself a little bit more space, a little bit more time and bamble to the defence. The two tried to score, a show and go, nice in the first half, and then that, that nice little dummy when he showed Jake Connor from there. That's it because he puts the defences, when he's running with the ball in hand, he puts the defences in three minds and he gives himself time and space. But he has to play away from the rook area to create that problem. He seemed to be taking the line on a lot more. He wasn't, in, in other games I've seen, he's not, Do you know he's what, not John, asking questions no, of the yeah, but he was. Because, he was because you know what, because he's too close to the yeah, rook. Yeah. Standoffs do not play at first man. They play second man out from there. Give yourself that space and time. And that is the responsibility then of the number seven, who hold, realistically, all he is, is there to pass, catch and pass, yeah. catch, catch and pass and support down the middle of the field and let the standoff do the running of the game. It's easy done. Some concerning news, because the media, the rugby league media, are going to choose who is the Super League Young Player of the Year. I don't trust them as far as I can throw. The five players, I don't know who the, who the media are, by the way. I, don't, I hope they don't ask me, because I've not seen enough of these people. Uh, the uh, five nominees are, let's go and pick the uh, winner. The uh, aforementioned Jake Truman, Matty Lees of St. Helens. Wishing well, by the way, Matty. He's had a bowel operation. Is that because he missed the... Mm, he's uh, had an operation. He's had bowel, bowel he's had removed to, after, to after, find after, the cut after the race game, and then put back in. Wow. Yeah, yeah we wish him well. I mean, so no, it's it's called a groin strain. That's all it was in that one, yeah. Mm, I don't think so. Again. Uh, that's, serious, so that's a serious injury, and we, we wish him all the best. Lee, Lee Drynos, Page, Jack Walker, and Harry Newman, and Morgan Smithies of Wigan. So one of those five will be the Super League Young Player of the Year, voted on by the media. Who would your vote be for, Gary Stoffel? I'll tell you what, it's, it's a pretty tough call to be honest with you, because in their own... In their own aspects, they've, they've all had decent seasons, you know, certainly Jack Walker and Newman, when, when the senior players have been pretty poor, them two have been pretty standout for Leeds, you know, Morgan Smith is sensational, Knowles is, everybody knows our, our rating from there, and, and Matty Leeds, but if I had to pick one, I said, I said about Morgan Knowles, but I'd have to go for Young Smith, is it Wigan, to be honest with you? Yeah, I, I actually think that's quite an easy decision, mm. personally, because I just think you look at the impact he's had on his team. Massive. Mm. A team that's kept winning, yeah. second in the division, had all that trouble at the start of the year. I think he's been immense. I think Lees has gone well. Walker and Newman, yeah, been all right. Good yeah, players, yeah, and yeah. they will be very good players yeah. in the future. I don't think they've done enough. I don't think they've won enough games to make you think. Yeah, but Leeds are out with the poor league side today. Yeah, they have. But Leeds have been yeah. poor, and yeah. they're in the bottom half of the table. And you know, they've. I think under Agar, they've won one game against a team in the top half of the table. That is not doesn't make them player of the year credentials for me. I think he's Smithies, I think he's been outstanding. And I, I actually get excited when I see players like him playing because he's going to be there for 10 right, years. Right, you know, he's, he's, he's an old-fashioned... What we know is that they're an old-fashioned loose forward. Yeah. You know, old-fashioned loose forward. You know, I get fed up as well. I don't know why I'm even saying it. Old-fashioned or old-school. Hold on. It's the right way to play with the ball. They're, back, they're back in vogue now yeah, when you see them across it's the board. It's the, right, it's the right way to play with your head yeah. up. Because you've always got head up and eyes. And up. Well, so you do that anyway. You, 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 you can't pass the ball like that, can you? Because we're going to pass it to you. You know, always, always play. And I call it vision awareness. Always play with that. Never mind the old school. Get the players express themselves. Like Donnie Ward does with his players. Well, I think that's come that's come back. Because you look you look particularly in the NRL. Jake Royer, Manley, Cameron Murray at South. Victor Rabbit, Roosters. I've got to see that Cameron Murray. Oh, he's phenomenal! I mean, he could be he could be playing rugby union for Australia now because he played he played both codes. He'd, well, be, he'd, he'd be going to the World Cup. He is a, a freak of a player. Yeah, I mean, he can do everything in defence. Mm. He can offload. He can ball play. Mm. Um, yeah, and those those that that thirteen role has gone back. We've gone another back from just being another prop to actually. Well, that's what we need. That's what game. that's what we need to do now with our loose forwards. Let them play with the ball and let them play what they see. Uh, people already starting. To get the digs in. Here's Mick. You want to buy a guide to all the championship grounds, Rich? Says Mick. Me. Well, I mean, you can save a page of them because two are playing at Jewsby, aren't they? So that's one good thing for you. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Looking forward to two, oh, trips, two trips to Jewsby next year. Stay in the postcode. It's only yeah. one bus ride from Wakefield. So it is. Good. Uh, People's Slate. Dual registration says John, but it's helped Newman to get where he is so far. And Featherson into the top five as well. Can't well, have. he hasn't played as this year, I don't think. He not play, he's played all at least. I like him, Newman. I think he's, he's mm. growing. He's, yeah. I like his aggression, John. I don't know about you. I think oh, he's, yeah. in. he's, he's a bit of a feisty character. Isn't he? I think earlier in the season, his defence was probably mm. under question a bit. I think uh, Gildart did a number on him when, when Wigan played. But on against Salford, 
he was fantastic. He would come off the line making his, you know, making his tackles. His contact was great. And when he's when he's got the ball in his hands, he can create things. So he's a great prospect. We have to point out that Salford fans dubbed in the idiot with the flare, otherwise they'll get upset. No, they did. Yeah, I, th- I think that police itself. Everyone's told, everyone's but it's one idiot everyone's that said. brings down the good, the good name of the club. Sadly, it's like this show. We've got one idiot, and we all get tired with the same brush, don't we, John? Well, oh, it's a bit harsh, Phil's not here. Don't talk about don't talk about Phil. He's not here. And, 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 not. And someone trying to find why why you take players to the rugby? Why? Yeah, it's what, what is it's it? Dangerous. What, 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 yeah. He's showing up. Well, he's like a fisherman. Fish fish really. really. You think his boat had got lost? He was letting off a distress signal. Yeah. Danny Baker used to do a great fun. Things you've got into football grounds. So, like, because obviously you're not allowed to get in anything. Put him with chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> chainsaw. What did he say? Was that guy, what is it? Who is it? The Timberwolf. What are they called? The uh, Portland Timbers. Portland yeah. Timbers. That's the it. guy with the wooden bow tie. If you've never heard the wooden bow tie, just when we've finished. Yeah. Go search that. Uh, so, yeah. So, we've uh, we've talked about Cass and Hull. I mean, two tough games this week. Cass got a Wigan. Hull at home are Saints. Do we think Cass are in the five? I think I think Cass will get beat, but they'll be in the five. <clears throat> Depends what side St Ellis take, doesn't it? Well, they've got next week off, regardless. So yes, they're not yeah, gonna, yeah, I so think they'll, 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 they'll put a number on. Yeah, yeah they they'll, they'll want to go to the uh, the week off. We 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 call them. Yeah, 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 so yeah, and so so, so does that make it? I don't have to get a so well. Bachelors have been up to me. Score, you're going to save us a fortune. <laughs> but we don't have to put you in a bath unless you please. So hopefully, to be fair, if you've got in a bath, they're not going to. They might only get a couple of cans of peas, in yeah. What? Strategically placed. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Well, I imagine when you get in, there's a little bit of water you get in, it goes right up to the top. Move on. Man. Move on. Come, come so, back. Way. so, do you top five or not? No. Cass. Oh, Cass. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Cass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, coming up in our comprehensive roundup of Women's Super League at 7 o'clock, plus um, the full guide to teams in the Nigerian Rugby League, which I'm going to cock up all the, trans- uh, the uh, pronunciations of. So, stay tuned. Uh, for that at 7 o'clock if you listen on the podcast skip forward we won't talk about anything interesting for the next 20 minutes um, elsewhere um, have you got something about against Featherstone says Dave no just point out that they've signed loads of players from Leeds on Joe Reg and that's why they're where they are hmm. if they didn't have all those players they would not be where they are in the league I did like the, the the comments from uh, David Longo I think it was yesterday or today about the the crowd trouble and, it's, and he has actually said you know if we need to Ban alcohol to the ground. We will if we have to play behind closed doors. We will. And well, actually, there, then. What's happened to Felton here? Uh, I think there was uh, was there race. Uh, there might have been racist comments picked at aimed at a steward, and I think there was. What you said is yeah. Yes, I, believe oh, so. right, I wasn't right, there, but right. from what I've read, um, right. but it, they were also trying a, an education program where the players go out into schools and I guess trying to educate the local populace about. I'm not sure it's it's not kids are the problem, or is it? <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not saying it is, but I think what what I'm what I am saying is that the club are being proactive in trying to combat this. They're not just saying look, we don't have a problem, or you know, it's just mm-hmm. an eyesight. They're actually the club are being some CCTV and get a bloke to watch it and go, it's him, kick him out. Well, I think they've done Quite that. Easy. I think they've done that with uh, with other people. But, okay. You know, they're, they're, it's they're, an ongoing they're, problem for them, isn't it? And, well, it's an ongoing problem in the game, though, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, look at what's happened at Warrington and, you know, Catalans early in the year and, you know, other grounds. And this is why I'm so awesome need to be aware of this. When you get a reputation, you start, you're the easy target. I'm not saying it hasn't happened, but when it's happened again and again and again, people will point the finger at you and, and the final start the game, up. When they go through the bottle with James Charles. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, so just, yeah, need to be careful. We need to be strong with the punishments, but it's the... Everyone's looking for excuses for things, aren't they? Mm-hmm. As yeah. soon as something happened, oh, it wasn't a real Salford fan. Just, just say, well, it doesn't matter. Don't come yeah. on excuses, just go with it. But Richie just mentioned that we need to be strong with punishments. What punishments? That's true. When a punishment's going to start. Yeah. Eh? Exactly. We're still waiting for that debacle at uh, Warrington and Carroll. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. so you go back to football and that old football goes on about the moment. He's, everything's, so, everything is the fault of social media. And social media is evil. Um, however, it's an open sewer. It is an open is. sewer. Mm. However, when someone is racist at a football ground, they get banned for life, don't they? When a professional footballer is racist at a football ground, they get banned for five games. Mm. So, and the same happens in rugby league. If someone makes a homophobic comment on the pitch, they get an eight-game ban or whatever, don't they? If someone makes a homophobic comment in the crowd, they get banned for life. Mm. 
What's the difference? Dave says it's legal. Yes, it is, uh, True Rage. I'm just pointing out Featherston have used it to their fullest. Oh, I'm they not, have. I'm not, I'm not they saying have. it's a bad It'd be thing, interesting, but... though, next year when reserves come yeah. in, how yeah. that yeah. affects Featherston. I like Because Fair. Leeds will have to nourish their own reserve team before starting to think about Featherston. I like Fair. But I agree with John's point earlier on. Those that are used, and I think the Leeds Featherston link up is dual reds actually working well for the players. You know, the young lads there that have had game time, that's Hamley's one. Look at him now, super, what is he, super league's top try scorer, second top try scorer. Blake and Albert, he's on Played a lot at, at mm. Fev, learned his game, and look at him now, he's flying in super league, so it does work, it does work. Anything else happening on social media? Uh, yeah, plenty of on uh, Facebook and on YouTube. Do we want to talk about Swinton? Because I don't think it'll take that long to talk about, really. Go on then. Uh, Rob will say Swinton and Salford should merge then you guarantee 2,000 home attendance I did enjoy uh, we were followed weren't we by the real Swinton on Tuesday oh, which, oh, which, the real, real Swinton yeah, yeah. oh they're yeah. splinting yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> followed by the it's like, it's like the life of Brian yeah. the it people's is. front of Judy and the Judy of people's front and whatever else I'm setting up provisional Swinton next week so that was very exciting <laughs> here's the problem with this thing A it's interesting because at the start of the season, there was a story about a team from Manchester applying to be in the Rugby League Pyramid in League One, and they were turned down. And now we've got a team that exists, changed its name to Manchester. To but they're still going to play where they play, though, So what's the point? You know, well, if they're moving into Manchester. They, I, I, understand the, I understand the reasoning, but the problem is with the theory is, anyone in Manchester who is above the age of one might have heard of Rugby League already. And I've seen it on the telly. They've got Salford, they've got Swinton, Oldham, Rochdale, all the other places that are nearby because that would be John Free Great in Manchester. It's not as if they haven't got an opportunity to go watch Rugby League just because a team hasn't got Manchester in the name. Yeah. Plenty of people from Wakefield support Leeds United because they're near, or Bradford, or Sheffield United, or Sheffield Wednesday. So I mean, no link to the place. It might get more business, I don't know. Obviously, that's what they believe. It's not going to make any difference. And a team in the cha- bottom end of the championship, it will probably end up in League One one day because they haven't got enough of a fan base to care to bring in the money they need. We bend over backwards sometimes to accommodate teams and clubs who were big ones, but what do they provide now? Mm-hmm. We've got too many professional teams. It's like yep. there are too many professional football clubs. I said this about Berry the other week. Very gun bust, right? There's all the MPs jumping up and down, blah blah blah. And well, what difference has it made to football that very gun bust? No, no, I think it, I think well, we've never we've also the, no, we have you have the discussion that oh you can't let the, the team go bust, no one will let it go, but someone will step in. I think those days have gone now. Mm-hmm. I think businessmen yeah. are shrewd enough to know so yeah. we'll let it go bust, we'll start again in the in the bottom division or whatever. Um, and that might in some ways be the best thing for Bury, but they're going to probably start in League 2 if they change the which, rules. Which is ridiculous. And then, and it's yeah, where, does, where does that go? I don't know. But I want it's... every team to be successful, I want every club to be successful, but there's only a finite amount of money. There aren't millions of millionaires out there who want to pump money into failing rugby league clubs no. or bottom end rugby league clubs. I mean, Rochdale, 27 games, one win. They've conceded over 1,260 points. They're bottom of the table, they're getting relegated. So what happens to them next year? Well, they'll be in League One. Where are they going to play? Are they going to be at the ground where they keep, you know, I mean, not to play there or whatever it was? I don't know. I don't know. Right, let's move on. Uh, James Greenwood has signed for Salford from Old Kingston Rovers today. Mm-hmm. So that's a, a nice move for them. Another good signing for Ian Watson's mm-hmm. team. Although I should say, look, the final thing on the swing, I think it was funny to see their local councillors get involved and say, oh, she's a disgrace, you changed your name. And then Andy and Maisie replying to them saying, we haven't built a bloody ground, have you? So, <laughs> politicians, <laughs> waste of space on a lot of them. Exactly. Exactly. Right, uh, what else do you want to talk about? Where are we going? Are we going to talk in games? Oh, we can do. Oh, uh, Danny says, uh, spot on the whole Manchester content. We're not made people from Manchester watch this sport. If they were interested, they would find the team. Is that the team changes their name to Manchester, which alienated a heavy percentage of their current sport base. And it's the same thing that happened to Salford when good old Dr. Marwan said, oh, I'm going to change the name to Manchester. And he quickly rode back on that one when he realised there was no support for that content. Mm, indeed. Right, let's have a look. We'll, we'll talk about the bottom of the table in a bit. Let's have a look at the top. Um, Wigan, big winners over the Dragons. We had a big chat about the Dragons last week, Scully, about Steve McNamara. You saw mm. that video with Bernard Gouache. Bernard Gouache has come out and said he's going to give him a new contract. Mm. Well, they got smashed again this last week. 
they're a joke, are they? The dragons at the minute. But also as well, Bernard Glass has got six or seven players as well, hasn't he? You know, so I don't think he's I don't think he's putting all the responsibility on McNamara, and if I'm honest with you, I think it's rightly so because uh, them players and them senior players and the so-called quality uh, players in the Catalans jersey are an absolute waste of time. As I've said, I think two or three times already this season, and I'll say it again now, they're an absolute disgrace to that jersey and a disgrace to the club. You know, so. Uh, yeah, Mackay will have to take some responsibility because uh, he's the leader from there and certainly now, apart from the coaching, the man management's got, I would say, a lot better from there. But them players, certainly them senior players, and uh, have been a disgrace to that jersey. I don't think you can blame McNamara fully, 100%, for the way that, uh, as Bernard himself has said, the second part of the season has been disastrous. Mm. You're right, John. Do you think they're doing the right thing and giving him a new deal? or <sighs> It's hard to say. I mean, I, I agree with Scully. I wrote, I wrote something on... Catalans on Patreon a few weeks ago and I think the problem is the, the leadership and the culture of that club. It's just a history of underperformance. I mean, it seems like they get their recruitment wrong every year. You know, they, they spend say, the money but they don't spend they it wisely. Spend, they spend, they're one of the biggest spenders in the competition and they get pretty much arguably the pick of the best players, well the best players from the NRL who want to come to Super League because of the lifestyle and also the tax incentives. Um, but they go there for the wrong reasons, and they just don't seem to be able to pick the right players. How do you think James Maloney's going to change that one? Well, I think I think James Maloney is a fantastic player, and he's a competitor. Not doubting that. But you look at, uh, apart from Origin, this season of Penrith, mm. he's not had a good season. I've heard he's got a, a shoulder problem. Uh, another Super League coach, coach told me earlier this season, you know, when he was talking about um, James Maloney coming over, he's got a shoulder issue. I think he's 33. Mm -hmm. Have they given him a th I think he's a three year yeah, three three deal? Why, three why would you? I mean, well, I know I, he, wants, I got, he wants a three year deal because he yeah, wants a yeah, nice yeah. retirement. I got you know, slated but, for questioning that. People should always be negative about a great signing. Well, yeah, but he, he, what's he like now? What's he going to be like in three years? Like, well, look at Greg Bird. What happened yeah. there? Look at Gave him a five year deal. Mm. How did that work out? Yeah. I mean, you've got to make smart recruitment decisions, you know. Um, I do, yeah, I, I do feel for Steve McNamara because I think there's just. There is, a, there is a cultural issue there. I think he's tried to, to change it and become more performance-based and, and toughen them up. And he had some, obviously, success in the Challenge Cup this year, but it's just gone all to pot this season. You should do a job swap. Send uh, Steve McNamara to Hull and uh, Lee Ranford to Catalans. Hmm. Used to the accent, so they'll be all right. Fair enough. Um, I, just, I find it surprising. Talk about Wigan, then. Um... French, three tries for him. Mm. He is quick. He is rapid, that boy. Um, for me, Scully, we're now going to win Super League. It's as simple as that. Can't really help, can you? Uh, I think when we, when we did the, uh, was it the Wakefield game a few weeks ago from there, we said, yeah, and certainly the big name players now are coming to the fourth. This is the business end of the season. We know what it's all about. And I say, we're just repeating ourselves from a point of view where we're going to be there, seen it, done it. And uh, they get ready nicely for when, uh, for when the season really starts for all these teams. You know, well, that's, this is the business end, and all the all the upheaval, as we say, uh, is gone. Everybody's happy. The uh, the best players are playing well, and I've got I've got I've got, I've got seen that Bevan play at all. I didn't, I didn't even know. I didn't never heard of him in the NRL, but uh, the reports what I've heard about him, certainly his performance at, uh, on Friday night with a hat trick, the record is absolutely lightning. So I'm uh, looking forward to seeing him in, in the players from there. Can I make a debate that um, about winning the grand final? If I'm honest with you, no, I can't because they know what it's all about. Saints have something to say that, so Warrington, maybe Cass, Salford as well. It, uh, when it comes to the business end, but you can't really win it out and win we for sure. I think we can definitely say I think we, they will get to the grand final. So I matter of who they're going to play. Mm. About you, John? What do you make of Wigan? I think the turnaround's been been mm. amazing. I mean, they, I saw them a lot early in the season, you know, at, at, in Barcelona and. In the UK, particularly Magic against Warrington, and they were they were quite poor. They weren't getting mm. flogged every week, but they just they weren't winning tight tight games and defensively. Well, to be honest, their attack wasn't wasn't doing much. George Williams is you know found a new gear. Obviously, I think that once the camera thing's been Correct. sorted, he's, he's settled down. Yeah, yeah. yeah and the, the most impressive thing for me is the young players: Smithies, Partington, Lindburn, um Liam Farrell coming back has just been giving a massive shot in the arm. So he's uh, banned, isn't he, on Friday, on Thursday? Yes, he's got yes. one game banned. Is it's that right? Perfect time for a ban. Well, Farrell has. Yeah, was he? Right. Yeah. 
Right. I tell you what, go back, go back to that performance uh, in Barcelona. You look at the two sides out. Alan Seaman's gone. Uh, <laughs> you wouldn't, yeah. You, you, wouldn't you, have you, 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 would, you would never, you would never ever have thought that. And and again, I think I said about you know, four or five weeks ago when all the upheaval, the Sean Wayne situation, the Sean Edwards situation, Adrian Lamb didn't know whether it was coming or going. It's like a yo-yo. They said he didn't have a clue uh, what to say when he'd been interviewed regarding his position, the George Williams scenario. But then once all that got settled, mm. which again, what is now seven weeks ago. You could just see the results. So, what is it? Is it twelve from thirteen or thirteen from fourteen? They've gone on the bounce now. You know. It's 12 from 13, so all yeah. the uh, all the all the, the the who are regarding is it not? Is it happening? This whatever. It's all done and dusted. And they're sort of certainly you know, focused on nobody that well not just gets to the grand final. But hey, let's let's not forget you. They are the grand final winners. They are, oh, the, yeah. they are the grand final holders. They they're not going to let this go. No, not at without, all. without a bloody massive fight because it's theirs. Well, the, there's one place where they want to be. And that's at Old Trafford uh, when it comes to the last game of the season. Well, the funny thing about that Barcelona game was Catalans treated it like it was a grand final, mm-hmm. like a Champions Cup final. Like the, the atmosphere there was amazing. You know, the Catal- Catalonian people, they really got behind it, but it was just another Super League game. I mean, mm-hmm. It was special, but mm-hmm. you've got to keep playing the rest of the season. Yeah, they've yeah, just, yeah. Since then, they've just dropped away terribly. They have indeed. Awfully, some would suggest. Don't write off Saints. That's what I've been told. No, oh, well, look, they've, they've, been they've lost three games all year. Two of them against London. Don't look beyond the same. Who's in the team that beat them? Catalans. Yeah, in, in early yeah. in the season. Yeah, 23-22 yeah. or yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, one point. Yeah. 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 Very good. Uh, so, yes, Wigan, uh, look, they uh, win on uh, Thursday night against Castleford. They will be second. Interesting, who's going to finish third? Could be a shootout between mm. Warrington and Salford. It's all about the points of isn't it? It is. Uh, we saw, Richard and I saw Warrington against Wakefield when Rich won't sign himself his. Signing himself his? Well, you know what I mean. Um, Daryl Clark, instrumental, played really well. Hit the straps first 40. To me, the Warrington we saw earlier in the season was back. Second half came out. <sighs> Awful. Wakefield should... If they'd have got some out of it, Wakefield, you couldn't have complained, I don't think, as a Warrington fan, could you? in the doubt until, until right at the end. Um, I still need to re-see Deck Patton playing the ball into touch, which was one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. Seen one of the most schoolboy errors. He's kicked a drop goal, there's seven in front. Kicked the ball into the corner, guy gets tackled right on the, to try to get him into touch, tackled on the on the touch line. Deck Patton, standing next to the touch judge, one foot in touch, picks the ball up to play it, passes it, goes... <laughs> Oh, 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 and turn the ball straight out. You've never won it so village, won it? He actually stood out of the field to pick the ball up and play it. It was like, I don't believe you just did that, man. I don't believe it. Mm. Talk about game management. He, he didn't have any there. But, but also, when you look at in two games, uh, what Warrington got to lead to then, obviously, Salford play Hulky to Rovers. The purpose in the games, I is we know Hulky, I need to win to literally survive. Salford, they uh, they need to win, but also to win. I think around about sixteen points more than what Warrington get if they beat Leeds, or mm. Leeds need to get Warrington it's, out from there. It's there's 14, so, 14. Yeah, fourteen. You know, yeah. so there's plenty of purpose in well in all the games as we all know with the bottom four as we talked about, but even for the top five from there, you know, Salford and Warrington, Wigan, they want to make sure they win to make sure they get the second spot. But yeah. Salford well, and Warrington, well, said, Warrington and Salford yeah. are in effect playing for an third extra four, life. Yeah, third yeah, four yeah, place. Yeah, so yeah. That's what they're doing for the home draw the thing, for the extra life. Yeah. The thing that impressed me most about Salford on, on Friday was that they were so patient. It was like a, a finals game. They waited, they, they kicked in, they forced drop outs, right. they just slowly worked right, So I'll ask, you, I'll ask you the question then. I'll ask you the question. I don't really think that they can, but can Salford get to Old Trafford? I think they can. They can. I think you look at that team, Jackson Hastings. Can't be by himself. Can't no, no, no. Himself. Well, that's, they're not a one-man team. But he might be the best player in the competition. Mm. And he's playing... <laughs> Tui Lola here is a completely different player. Right, right then. Can that Salford pack I take, think, take on a Wigan or a Salford? Uh, to St. Helens pack? I think the, the, they've got the pack that can do it. It's not, you know, it's not a big-name pack. It's no frills. But Josh Jones, he was tremendous at Henley. Players like Gil Dudson, Moss of they're in great form. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I, I think they can actually do it. They've won seven in a row. When you, as you know, when you keep winning, my you, know, it doesn't, you, don't care, you don't care about who no, you're no, playing. My, my win is, confidence, confidence. Yeah, they, win eight, they win eight in a row. Yeah. If they come fourth, bomb out first week. That's the worry I have for Salford. Because are they, when they, have they so reached they, so their goal? Will they, they go to Warrington then? They've got a Warrington third place fourth, don't they? No, second place third. Is it? 
Yeah. Oh, fourth place, fifth place, is it? Yeah. All oh, right. I thought it was second place. So they would play cards first, first, first half. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm pretty certain. All oh, right. Yeah. Saints have the week off, second yeah. play third, winner goes to the play Saints for a place. I thought the second place fifth and third place fourth. Are you sure? No. Oh, right, okay. I'm, I'm quite confident. Lose the ground the fourth versus fifth fifth. Yeah, 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 lose yeah. So they're out. Oh right, okay. Yeah. Right. But I mean regardless whether they finish third, fourth, fifth, I mean, when is the last time Salford finished that sort of Are we talking since the seventies? I don't know. I mean I asked him. I asked him. I'm a new I'm a new Salford fan. Yeah, big ass up yeah, you know, I'm surprised you're not in your shirt. Um, but I asked him because he can't remember when Salford uh, were, you know. Oh, he's back, back they to can the, win it for me. Back to the day. One kid's at Key Fielding days, 1971. Yeah. I think it's 1975 since they've come seven yeah. on the bounce. Oh, he's, he's Key Fielding. So if you're, day, if you're a Salford fan, oh, enjoy it. Massive. Don't don't bring players to the game. Don't moan yes. about media boys. Just enjoy your this, team. This, this well. is a long time between yeah. for any success, yeah. you know, for Salford. And, uh, well, we we spoke about it loads of times. How we like Salford playing the way that he was. What he yeah. has done, not just. Uh, off the field, but off, you're not just on the field, but off the field. The tiny budget, brilliant. absolutely been brilliant. Yes, yeah, and we, yeah, I think they've they've learned that other way of playing. They that's, did it against Huddersfield. Yeah, yeah. They weren't yeah. great. They ground it out. They won. They did it against Warren. They weren't great. They ground it out. They won. They yeah. did it again this week. So the word the they word they've developed, developed they've developed yeah. that patience. Yeah, I was just going to say there, John. The word what you just used a couple of minutes ago, patience. So mm -hmm. you what that could be a massive telling factor if they want to get to the ground. Well, it's going to be an interesting one. Hull KR at Salford. Hull KR. They've got to play, unless London are 30 nil down at half time, they're going to have to play to win the game, and it's not going to be an easy game for them well, to win. Jason points out, it's all for men players in the mid 2000s, they were hammered by the Bradford Bulls. So what have happened to them? Under Carl mm -hmm. Harrison, big fan of the show. Oh, he was. Oh, he was. So was that an 8 playoff? Like was, was, was that an 8 10 playoffs? No, Rich? I don't think it was. All right. I don't think yeah. it was. <laughs> it might have been a 6. A 6. Did we have a 6 at one point? I think we did. Yeah, yeah. Can I tell that story about Carl Harrison? I feel <clears throat> Yeah, it's always big yeah. Remember, remember when we used to work, remember Radio Yorkshire? Remember the, the, those uh, those uh, halcyon days above the sandwich shop on the Ellen Road. Um, you asked him to do some co comedy, didn't you? No, I don't. Oh, I didn't, I want, no, it was Halifax. I wanted him to do an interview. Oh, and he was like, yeah, yeah, great. And then he found out that we uh, were associated with Ken Bates. He's a big legion. He is a big legion, I'd say. Carl, we never heard so, from him again. It's like the Japanese fell in the jungle. The war's over. He's gone. <laughs> you don't hold the ground anymore. Go on, what was happening on our pole? Uh, you said the poles, yeah. Before you go into the uh, st stuff, yeah. While you're yeah. stuff your face. Uh, who's going down? Oh, yeah, that's a good point. I will actually. Yeah. Well, Forty percent whole KR still. London twenty nine percent. Huddersfield seventeen. Wakefield thirteen. So those Nine people, more. those forty percent think London beat Wakefield and whole KR lose at Salford. Um, we haven't mentioned, but who's going to make the uh, grand final in the championship? Assuming Toronto are in there, and uh, this one's tight. To lose forty five percent. York City Knights forty three percent. Lee ten, and Fev. No, but it's not me, Dave. I'm not fixing this. Two percent. So uh, there you go. Um, you can vote. 4020 live on Twitter. Um, right, so in the world of the uh, Nigerian Rugby League, which starts this weekend, and apparently um, they've got a TV deal, which is more than the Championship. Yeah, we didn't get on that. <laughs> we didn't be on that. Are they on our league? I don't know. My passport's run out, so I, I might have to get a new one. Can we still get to Nigeria after the thing? We're on a coach. Yeah, we're on a coach. So there's two divisions. I right? need to drive if you're going to go. <laughs> two divisions. Women's Rugby League coming up. Two divisions. Uh, in the north, you've got uh, Joss Minor, the uh, Kano Lions, Kano Gazelles, it's a big derby there. Kano Derby. And the Zazao Bulls, 2019. <laughs> <laughs> oh, straight red. Uh, and uh, in the southwest division, you've got the uh, the Lagos Rhinos. Mm. Should be the Lagos Ly Lions. Lagos on. Kings. And the Lagos Broncos and Lagos Haven. It's like Sydney. One of these teams are getting moved to Brisbane. <laughs> and Echo Trinity. Like like everything. There's just this one Trinity side and then battling against all these teams from Lagos. Go on, Trinity. Uh, so that's the uh, the Nigerian Rugby League, which starts this weekend. There's three rounds and then there's an international break for the uh, Middle uh, East Africa Championship. All right, good stuff. Uh, so uh, good luck to all involved. Who are we supporting on? Who are we supporting? Right, who are you supporting? Trinity. Who are you supporting? Tell us. You've got to have a team in Nigeria. Yeah. So, Corn, who are you going for? Joss Minor, Kano Lions, Kano Gazelles, Zazao Bulls. I'd like the Zazao Bulls. Zazao you can have the Zazao Bulls, eh? Everyone says you're not a Bulls. I'm a Kano Lion. 
So I'm, I'm a British lion, so now I'm a Kano lion. Who's left in the north then? Kano's. Joss Miner. Yeah, um, the gazelles. Kano, gazelles Who do you want? The gazelles or the. There's no, there's no seagulls, I'll have to go to gazelles. Alright, that means I'm Miner. Joss Miner. Joss Miner. Josh Miner. Miner. Josh Miner. Josh Miner. Josh Miner. Josh Miner. Women Super. that a local boozer? It's all draws this week. 6 20, leads 20. That was good, apparently. Um, I tell you what, Chanel Krause, she's got a bit of reputation. She, she was got sent, off, sent off last week, Simbin this week. She's a good player. Good player. Now, of course, as we know, the women's discipline is completely separate from the men's. We've got a clue what goes on. It's all shady behind closed doors. It's all off for that. Uh, Wigan 20, Bradford 20. He's always does nothing for either team. Given that, well, I guess the Bulls have to win that. They, they need to win, don't they? Yeah. Can they aim at the playoffs still? Um, I don't believe they in front of me, so I can't tell you. That's um, not good, is it? I thought you were the women's expert. Well, no, I just tend to be. York 16, I'm yeah. certainly not. York 16, Featherstone 26. Good win for Fev. And uh, Castleford, oh, I'll tell you what, they've got this the wrong way around here. Uh, it was Wakefield for Castleford 36. I know because it was at the, the home of Rugby League, the uh, Mobile Rocket Stadium. Uh, a controversial match uh, in which uh, Castleford rested a few players, brought in three youngsters through their. Uh, Talent development pathway, so doing good things at Cass. All right, good. But I read here, uh, just as the Vissers were heading for a 36 0 victory, there's no writer here, so I can't tell you who said this. The game became ever more heated and aggressive. I heard there was a punch up. As Castleford pushed forward, an incident occurred which resulted in both teams coming together. 26 woman brawl. Were you roaring on from the side? Yeah, like I'm stuck into him! <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the referee lost control of the games as both teams brawl. I think it's a bit harsh. What's the referee supposed to do? Get involved. <laughs> Have you seen some of the? You I mean, obviously you were there. I've seen some of the old ones when like uh, Presley and coming. They're absolutely laying into each other. The refs in the middle. There's one of them. He got cracked. I forget who it was. Twenty six women. Are you going to? Well, I don't answer that. Uh, once tensions calmed, Castleford's Gracefield received a red card while Alicia Rhodes was sent to the Simbi for Wakefield. Bit of bit of facials on the floor. Obviously, you feel happy. Couple of forearms in there. Good stuff. You were there, were you? Might be called as a witness. No, good stuff. Uh, the bad, sorry, uh, we're against violence, aren't we? Keep forgetting that. Bad. The decision sparked a furious reaction from visiting supporters who once again came in large numbers. I think this was written by someone from Castleford. Uh, they they were very. You write a report? I don't write. They were, I'm not a journalist. They were very upset with the Castleford. Give us it! That's what I'm saying, I reckon. You're 36 nil up. You've won 12 out of 12. And if he's still doing give impressions. Me a, give me a break. <laughs> what, people from Castleford? Uh, but they will you, you, you can see why Richie's got all the selfish going. Oh, yeah. He's banned he's <laughs> from the yeah. jungle. He's just he's he's from the jungle. You know what, if we weren't here and the cameras were, I reckon he does this at all. They will uh, the mirror, in the in the his room shouting at himself. <laughs> they will lift the league leader's shield if they beat or got a point against uh, York on Tuesday the 17th of September. Who's that? Who's going to win it, you say? Cass. Cass, Cass. all right. Okay. Um, person of the match... Man of the match, uh, Emma Longley. She was superb for uh, Cass. Woman of the number match. Number eight. Great run. Deserved the try. That's the big difference between the game when they lost 100 nil in the cup. A lot of long range tries in the cup game. Wakefield's defence yesterday very good. Um, check out the interviews on social media. As uh, the Wakefield coach Ken Kerr said, at least we won the punch up. I'm not sure if that's on message in rugby league, but still. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to take every positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. the girls are showing a bit of fight. No, I think you should like that. No one's getting paid. Do whatever you want. I think you should like that. If they want more, if the people in charge of the sport want more professionalism, pay people money. So we're uh, you've done the Nigeria. Yeah, we've Go done on Nigeria. the mine. Yeah. Um, I thought Dan wants a signed picture of us. I don't know why. You're not having one. <laughs> You're not having one. <laughs> it's weird. Why would you want a picture of us? Really? <laughs> yeah, unless the only reason you can have one. Is if it's to keep the kids away from the fire. If that if that's the case, then we're like you can I have think, one. I think if it's for if it's for your own personal you, we, we're not having one. I'm yeah, that's the the in the bath. Yeah. No, it's it's there. We're, gonna the, sell, uh, we're gonna sell him for uh, on the uh, on the fridge. Put it on the fridge. Here's Scott. People are gonna screenshot the uh, program from when we said that Salt Saint walked in the grand final for when they do. I'm not bothered. Oh, bring it on! Bring it on! <laughs> um, They've have... been the best team, right? But it's and I said, look, I've said this for months. I didn't think they'd win anything. I don't include the league leaders. They they won that by a mile. Fair play to them. I just think big games. We've got a question to answer. <clears throat> I don't think Wigan have. That's the problem. That I look at the the top five. Who would you pick? There's only Wigan win. 
regular big game. So we'll see. We'll see. Time will tell. Wakefield have been robbed and replaced, by the way, in the try of the week thing that the RFL do. They put Adam Hill in there so just, for, just for clicks, don't they? I know. Bias. I can't believe there's people in this sport who are biasly. Uh, following their own teams and with an agenda against everyone else, it's disgraceful. Uh, however, someone's asked us, uh, Chris Chester, should he get the sack? It's a bit harsh. What? I am of the opinion that having had two very good years in Wakefield, who have been in Super League since 1999 and done the sum total of sod all for most of them, bar battle against relegation, um, to have two good years and then one in which I think there are fairly mitigating circumstances for Wakefield. Yeah, not to say that they haven't played badly at times, but don't use injuries as an excuse, but how much of the salary cap jockeys has been on the sideline in Johnston, Fafita, Tupu, Ashurst? Mm-hmm. Arona. Arona, everyone else. So I'm not using it as an excuse. You're not using an excuse, but you're quoting it as an excuse. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. We've been rubbish for a lot of the time, but I think, despite that, Chris Chester gets a, a pass because for the last two years we've been all right. Totally. And we've been rubbish for us <laughs> the last few years. Would you get rid of him? No. No. Yeah, he's, he's got he's got time he's you know time in the bank hasn't he, you know because of the two years before but uh, but as we knew this year all right everybody's had injuries to be honest with you and you know Bruffy was brought in to um, to get him in that top five wasn't he uh, great start of the season you know they were, they were about third well, they lost the first game after yeah. yeah after about six or seven games they were in the top five and they were third in the league but uh, again when you talk about consistency expectation I'm afraid to say the players who have been representing Wakefield week in and week out. Just not being good enough, and uh, was it one victory now out of thirteen games? So they did the, play well, a lot better on Friday. Than they have yeah, but Richie, 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 they're they still lost. They're still lost, and they're still getting battered sixteen at our time. Or was it twenty at our time? You know, you, you can't afford to give anybody that sort of start. So it's one one in thirteen, and it's like anything else. It's quite simple. The league table doesn't tell lies. Does anyone think they were going to go win at Whiteford? Pretty much. No, but but I think. Coming home on the bus, I think mm, had a few chances, had a few chances, um, but they didn't crucially didn't take them. Um, played all right. I, uh, as much as I like London, I think they've got their hands full on, on Friday. If Wakey play like they did in the second half, I don't think they'll have too many they've, problems. They've got a good, they've got a couple of players who are still in contention who played against Bradford in 2015. <clears throat> in Reece Lynn, who's obviously grown up a lot since then. You have Danny Kerman who's been there and done that. So, but, but also, can, I, but can I bring in Scott Moore for one game? Yeah, but yeah, we'll bring Dodge in for the commentary. But the <laughs> Scott same, Moore! Yeah, but I say, man, as well, you know, playing all right, he's not going to get you where you want to get him off the top five. Simple as that. Yeah, but it's all about just winning on Friday, isn't it? Yeah, he's got to win. You we'll know, take care of business next year. Yeah? Well, we'll take care of business. To. Be interesting. They've got some decent earners going off their cap. they would be interesting what they do, Wakey. Uh, on the old uh, salary Sorry, cap. So yeah. Warren were good. What about that pass from Daryl Clark, by the oh. way? Like a 30 yard bullet pass. Proper Absolutely brilliant. It was really good. Uh, created this try for Ben Curry. Great to see him. Uh, they, play, they played well when they played well, Warren, and then they, as you say, switched off. But they did. Great celebrations for Ben Westwood, as we mentioned on Friday. Who dropped the F bomb yeah. on his, uh, on his, on his speech? He did. He, 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 got, he was getting I mean, really, was. really emotional, and everyone in the ground knew he was getting, you could tell. You know, and then he just like went off oh, it. Ben, come on, get on with it, and he, he carried on. He moves on for quite a long time, it was a hell of a speech, and he did get a great ovation, so he's going to miss rugby a hell of a lot, Ben, hopefully be all right when he's uh, retired and whatever. I think he, uh, Steve Price said he's going to be staying at the club doing some work, that's so good. that's good. Michael says, any shout-out for the US ARL Grand Final winners, Brooklyn Kings? There you go. Are, they, are, they, are they from New York? Can they, uh, can they take over New York City? Possible. I see they've resurfaced. They were the Toronto game. Yeah, they did, yeah. That's not news, Richard. Well, I, some people, I wish I had a budget. I wish I had a budget. Just go into a game. I wish I had a budget. I wish I had a budget to go. I mean, when the Pyongyang Pine ones turn up somewhere, I should wear the t shirt on uh, Friday at Bellevue and say, look, Pyongyang have turned up our delegation to look at how things are running in rugby league, point at things, get a picture of Kim Jong un and Photoshop him into the ground. I'll do that when I get home tonight. Also, the, the news about Ottawa sort of. Neatly tucked into the bottom press sacks. release from the. the uh, why are they? Uh, why are they not uh, coming in then? Why are they not coming in? What's the official reasoning? Well, I, I don't think there's been an official reasoning, but from what I understand, they still haven't agreed the the conditions in which they're coming in, which I would imagine would come down to, you know, what they're <coughs> paying the living teams to come over. But but they're still. Uh, we were told there were fourteen people that could bankroll that club themselves when they were. They've got 14 people who could finance this on their own, so why is finance an issue? Well, 
for me, for me, having seen the bid document that the that the clubs were showing at, at Salford a few months, but it wasn't very impressive. Mm. There's a lot of we're going to do this and we want to put. Was, know, it, like Mike, was it like Mike Bussett's England tea? <laughs> <laughs> Well, there was a lot of we're going to put rugby balls and kids' hands in it, but it wasn't actually a lot of concrete facts yeah. and, and detail. Um, and I don't think, you know, particularly with Toronto, there's still a lot of issues off the field. Can I can ask a question of you? Hmm? Do you think Toronto, if they win the championship grand final, will be in Super League next year? I think they will, yeah. I think, as I understand it, the CEO, Bob Hunter, is going to be out in the UK this month. And he's going to be meeting with club officials, other club officials, Super League, etc. I think he's talking with the IS, uh, their kit supplier, ISC, who they owe a fair bit of money. But from what I was told, someone about the RFL admitted to me, um, they didn't do their due diligence on Toronto. And so there, there's all these issues around Toronto, which people Look, discover, you know, visas, yeah. whatever else, um, you know, associated costs. So it's to, to bring in two more teams when you're not really sure. Well, one has only been approved, depending, you know, been approved pending. New York has not been approved. Mm. People seem to forget that. They think that New York's... Yeah, they've got to reapply. Yeah. So, yeah. But it just seems to me there's a lot of questions there that haven't been answered. And we need to get our ducks in a row before we jump into bed. So do, you think, do you think the Super League will be looking at this now, or Robert Elson, who we've not heard from for a hell of a long time? I can tell you, he's speaking next week. Oh, is he? Next Monday. Oh, yes, he is, yes. yes. Right, the so Super League thing. Yes, get there early to speak to him. But do you think he'll be having a conversation whereby he might be looking at going to fourteen teams? He did say loop fixtures would be a thing of the past. He said they were a one hit wonder. I thought they'd already been confirmed for next year. I thought that was reported somewhere. Um what about loop fixtures. Yeah, yeah. That the season was starting in January and Yeah, well we're not starting season. in January, but so we are having a loop so he, he said they were a one hit wonder, I think, not a one hit wonder. Then. I think if Sky said look we want fourteen teams then they would probably say yes, because they need to keep the broadcaster happy to get a new TV deal. So I think there'd be merit in going to 14 teams. Um, you know, if you bought in Toulouse and Toronto or Toronto and York, um, you know, I think there'd be an interesting addition. It, it does make sense with the fixture list because these loop fixtures are. Well, I did the, um, I did the, uh, you know about the loop fixtures. All right, loop fixtures, they are what they are, but obviously the. The one-off randomness of the old Magic Weekend. I actually did the Super League table if you knocked off the Magic Weekend result. It wouldn't be good um, for Huddersfield. It wouldn't be good for Huddersfield. They no. would be bottom of Super League without that 55-2 win over Hull. They would be bottom of Super League. Hull KR and Huddersfield at the bottom with 18. Huddersfield would have a worse points difference. London and Wakey and Leeds on 20. That would be your bottom five. And Salford would be third because they actually lost at Magic Weekend. Warrington beat Wigan. Um, so they, Salford will be third. Um, so it, it just shows what a big impact that has mm. had. You know, you'd be talking about Hulkar and Huddersfield both needing to win to avoid the drop. So I know they have to do that anyway, but London would not be bottom of the table. That, I guess that's the point I'm making. Speaking of finance, <coughs> somebody asked me uh, last week to mention that, that Wigan lost some money. I guess the only problem is a lot of money. If they've uh, if One they can afford million. to lose the money, is it an issue? I don't think any club well. Apart from Man City, can afford to lose, particularly in rugby league, can afford to lose that kind of money every year. But are, are they not? And look, I was I was one of the first to, to really get stuck into Wigan. You know, early in the season, I thought they were a joke. There were no coach. You know that Edwards. Oh, the Barkle, Edwards. The it was the Barkle, yeah. who's coming in. Blah blah blah. But I do know they have invested a lot of money in the infrastructure of their club. I know they don't own their own ground, but they're working to. Uh, improve revenue generation at games etc so I think there's been a lot of focus on that mm. and I think there's a lot of focus in turning Wigan into a self-sustaining club I think that's the aim yeah they've lost a lot of money this time but I, I think they are working at turning that around and you know Ian Lenigan is you know he's not short of a quid or two so I'm sure he can afford it at the minute but I guess it's not something he would want to keep doing um, so yeah they've lost money I think they're working out to turn it around I think we should you know, watch this space next year, see how they do next year. But the facts are, they don't own their own ground, and I think that is a really bad thing. Did you see one of the interesting creditors in Leeds Rhinos account, or whatever they're called? No. Who's no. Not company? Yorkshire Carnegie. Oh. But now they've gone... Uh... So, Rugby Union again screwing over Rugby League. Oh, yeah. That's supposed to the time where Rugby League screwed over Rugby Union by closing down the club. 
Oh, come on, get on, man. Come on. I think we, we did give him Israel for Lau, so that's worked out well. <laughs> <laughs> Is he played in the World Cup? Oh, he's not no, no, he's not playing anywhere. So it's not allowed to mention the World Cup when it starts. We won't mention it. I'm not yeah. interested. No, I don't care. Hope they all lose. Um, this week's uh, great match review panel. Uh, Liam Fowler has mentioned one match penalty. Grave B, Daniel Show. Joel Tompkins, mm. the victim of Hull, uh, will miss the final game because he got a grade A punching match penalty notice. Uh, Gavin Springer got the same and got zero, as did Jake Emmett. And Ryan Briley had got an A for uh, other contrary behaviour. Uh, Jake Emmett and Lee got uh, Grid B stands on two match penalty notice. So uh, you got Brian, away with punching, but yeah. it's still on someone. Uh, Brian McDermott sent some interesting comments after that. Yeah, game, he, did. Didn't he? yeah he, was, he did. He, he did. He wanted to, was he? Um, they could well meet again in the playoffs, of course. Uh, someone who will be meeting the Rugby League Disciplinary Tribunal is Brandon Moore of Halifax, who got a Grid D. Questions the integrity of match official. These people are not learning, are they? <laughs> Right, in a column instead, Brendan, uh, Brandon. Uh, Dane Chisholm, uh, zero matches, grade A contact with match official. Jack Almondroyd, grade C, foul abusive language from match official. Too much he did have one up to perfectly good try disallowed, a perfectly good try that potentially would have uh, given Featherstone a home playoff this week. Uh, and then some random other people. Uh, Nathan Chapel of Hunslet, Grimby, Dangerous for two matches, so he'll miss their game on Saturday or Sunday with Sunday, Worth, Sunday Worth. Workington. Yeah. And uh, Bradley Foster of Doncaster, also two matches, a grade C dangerous for us. What's the difference? Uh, he'll miss their game with Newcastle. Mm, and fair potential today. Okay, good stuff. That's all coming. Keep getting in touch. Uh, we've been having a chat about what's going on. In the old Super League, Salford won against Leeds. Uh, Richard Agar as the new Leeds coach. Stoyer, what do you make? Yeah, I think it's the right point. Um, it's certainly a rolling contract, 12 a rolling contract from there. I think you now what Leeds do uh, with all the coaches, at least, they put them on six month notice for us as well, you know. So if it's not working out, they can do what they want. Exactly. Is that, is that what not, the, uh, not really a vote of confidence, giving them one? Or is that just literally, if he goes badly, we can sack him and we don't have to pay yeah. him out? Well, yeah, I think that's yeah. a little bit from there. Himself, but anyway, yeah. but, uh, he's, he's, he's got the job. Um, the players certainly did the interview for him. They've all said that they've enjoyed working with him, they've enjoyed his coaching, they've enjoyed his management. So if he gets the right uh, right players in, you know, this talking about Luke Gale coming, if he get a, Maybe another hooker, uh, and from there, and maybe another second row. Then hopefully they can maybe contend in the top five. But as far as Richie goes, I think he's the right fit at this moment in time for the Rhinos. My favourite comparison in sport is comparing the Leeds Rhinos to Manchester United, great dynasties who have sudden falls from grace. Richie Agar's only got a Solskjaer. Go Does a good job as a as a caretaker. Gets a job full time, and I'm one of Richard Agar's <coughs> biggest supporters in terms of. I think he gets some fairly criticised for his well, work, agree work with elsewhere. I, agree with that. I think it's just an interesting appointment in terms of Leeds as a club and their standing. You would think they would have gone for a bigger name or a more successful coach. But again, that's not to take anything away from Richard. Is, is Kevin Sinfield Leeds coach? No, it's a serious question. No, it's a serious question. Is he the Sorry, coach? But I've got his name on the door. Rugby. Because he had his kit on against uh, London, his training gear, all his boots and everything, and I just thought, looks to me like you're the coach, man. <clears throat> you're not a, dire a director of rugby, wouldn't have his gear on, wouldn't he? have his suit on with a, a notebook and be making notes. I don't know. Am I reading too much into it? Well, the interesting thing is with, with David Ferner is that they fell out, and it was Sinfield offered to resign, and essentially Gary Hendon was picking either Ferner or Sinfield. Not for mm. Sinfield. So whoever the coach is has to have a good relationship with Kevin Sinfield. That's that's very clear. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you know, so he's the coach. Do, do you think Richard Agar has autonomy or everything that happens there? I don't. No, no, I don't. I think don't. So. And no. I, like, I like Richard Agar. I think it's the right appointment, mm. but I don't think he's the head coach. I don't think he has the final say on anything at that club. I don't think he'll have a final say on who comes in player wise. I don't think he has. A, I don't think. He, I'd be surprised if he actually picks the team, if I'm honest. <laughs> no, I'm not being I'm not being rude. No, 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 no. I look, I think he's a great coach, and I must say that every person we've ever spoken yeah. to rates him so highly. That and he does get hammered in the press. He's always been great with me in the media. He's good, he's good, he's good value, yeah. Yeah. he's he's brilliant, he well. he's a great he's obviously a great coach. But I'm just not sure he's he's running the roost at Leeds. I think this is all a big, you know. Kevin, put your name on the door. I think it's you. But we'll see. Um, they have beaten London, Catalan, Huddersfield, Casp, Catalan, Wakefield and London. They've beaten one team in the top half under Richard Agar. So I think all those saying 
return to the top five. I think Leeds, <laughs> despite the fact they are only eight points away, and they, they had a nightmare start to the season. Um, it is worth bearing in mind a lot of those games were at home as well. Um, they Ooh. have lost to Cass, Wigan, St Helens, Hull, KR, Hull, mm. St Helens, and Salford. So basically, they played Cass at a time when Cass were out of form. Anyone good they've played, they've lost. Ah, they're, they're two points off bottom. <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> my point is, I'm not so sure. They're rebuilding, aren't they? And like Rich said, the, the dynasty has ended and it's ended spectacular. Yeah, but mate, Three yeah, years in the bottom five yeah, or whatever. Yeah, mate, mate, it was, it was said for many, many years now. That's four years since that destiny ended. You know, I know we know what they were in the, uh, the grand final in 2017, but the preparation should have been done in 13 and 14 leading up to that. All right, some players may not have come up to where they should have been. I look at Jordan Lilly, who nothing. Liam Sutcliffe really hasn't found a position. Stevie Ward, who was supposed to be the new Kevin Sinfield, the new captain, uh, has been injured from there. So some players haven't really filled in from there. We talk about recruitment. Players who were brought in haven't been simply good enough. And then when you look at this year, and all the noise is certainly David Fernand. Everybody said, yeah, he's the right man for the job. It was part of the grand final of victory in 2004. I've got a great relationship with Kevin Sinfield. And we all know what happened there. The senior players couldn't take to him. They wouldn't have Fernand, so they got the sack. And, and when Leeds kept saying throughout the season, and I'm not having it because I know how big Leeds Rubble League club is, and we know with the facilities what they've got there now, we're in transition. Leeds Rubble League club should never, ever be in transition. It's all about preparation, getting it right, from what you know that should be from there. And it has... It has been a massively disappointing season. He sailed the ship, I would say, a little bit as Richie. But there's still problems there from a point of view where, when you look at the quality to get Leeds in the top five, they are still missing three quality players. Also as well, when they talk about transition, they realise that they're in a relegation battle and quite simply they had to go out and buy players to fill their positions, well, i.e. in Robert Lowy, Price out in Australia to, you know, to sort that out. Yeah, because on. they knew... They knew they was going to be in massive, what they have massive done, relegation Leeds, trouble. And what they have done and what Hulk Air haven't done, and this is why they are where they are, is Leeds beat the teams at the bottom. Mm. You know, they've beaten London the last two times they've played them. Yeah. Um, they, uh, all right, they lost to Hulk Air, um, but they've beaten Huddersfield, they've beat Wakefield, they've beaten Catalan. So mm. the teams around yeah, them have yeah, won. Yeah. Whereas Hulk Air, you know, they've lost three home games. Warrington. Lost, lost three home games. You know, but yet they've lost to the team. And if they'd won two of those games, yeah. Hulk Air would be safe now. They well, wouldn't oh, be oh, the oh, one of them games. Yeah. The last three home yeah. games, they have lost to Huddersfield, yeah. Wakefield, and London. Yeah. Oh, exactly. I needed one. Oh, I needed yeah. one. Big so bottle there, haven't they? they like we said, no, 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 no. <laughs> no. <laughs> on Friday, I was up with this. Did it show the same characters while they did at Catalan? It was different. I was at Hellyville. I got home on the Saturday. I was watching the replay the game and how they well essentially they gave it away in the last six minutes they're ahead they go down last tackle player I can't remember the player gets gets caught with the ball 10 metres or whatever stuff like last week. London go they are 90 metres and score they, they are had that team. game that yeah. win so I've said it all they're they had team. to do was keep the ball but finds the most ridiculous way to lose yeah. the important yeah. games and they do it they were winning at London, remember, earlier in the year. Yes. They went two yeah. tries up mm. and yeah. managed to lose the game. They have just got a habit of losing big games. And well, I'll tell you I, what, I said earlier, back and away from home, at home, yeah. I think that great support, he's yeah. great support, yeah. the they're more nervous than the players because yeah, the, they don't yeah. want to go to Batley, yeah. they don't want to go to Jewsbury. The they don't want to go to Jewsbury again to watch Bradley. But also, but also as well, <laughs> you mentioned this year, if they do manage to survive, and you look at the journey and what they've got in the squad this year, how many more journeymen have they got? Well, I think their recruitment's even well, worse. I said, I, it, I said it a month ago. Sean, Sean Kenny Down. Just gonna, Gary, Sean Kenny Down. Three years. I said, three, I said three, it a yeah. month ago. Exactly. Really? I said it a month ago. If it doesn't happen this week, it'll yeah. happen next year. Yeah, yeah. And do you know what, mate? Do you know what? I think, I think you could be right there because when you look at the journeymen what they've got, by the way, great that Tony's been decided to stay for three years and he'll drink, you know, he, we all know what Tony brings. We don't need to repeat ourselves. But Can I ask like, you a question, Gary? Yeah. If Tony Smith w- was... In charge of recruitment, would he assign those players that they've signed? I would. Not a chance. Is no. Not a chance. No, no, no way, man. And you know what? I think when he got answered, asked the question on TV the other night about Sean Kenny Darley, we're like that. Oh, I think so, but oh, not for me. Sean Kenny Dowell, do me a favour. Oh, Kiss and Rose, really, you know, he's looking at what do they want a winger for? And he's been garbage for the last three years anyway. Well, I was going to say, Sean Kenny Dale, 60 years ago, yes, but well, not, not Sean Kenny Dale has been yeah, playing for Newcastle. Absolutely not. Years, Again, yeah. it's just a journeyman who's good, and there's no fault of his. Coming over here, they get a nice contract, a nice pension for him, saying, but boy, oh boy, whoever's doing the... Well, Danny, Danny McGuire is not supposed to be doing the recruitment, but do they really need a winger? I don't as, think so. As uh, our good friend Sid 
Anyway, I, I, I'm worried about Simbad. On Friday, if it all goes wrong, I'm, I'm, I'm very concerned. Um, last time they put an ex -league play, Leeds player in a position of responsibility off the field, it all went well. I'll tell you what as well, one of, one of Wilkie's best players all season, they've let him go. You're hacking. Whenever he's played a scrum half, it's been playing Josh, a full back Josh recently. Josh Drinkwater's gone as well. So, yeah, well, he's been garbage anyway, hasn't he? To be honest well, with you. It's, it's, he's played it half back actually. Did you see him play against Catalans last week? Drinkwater, I think he led them to victory. Yeah, but John, one game again, it's, it's all about consistency performance. Yeah, last week he was yeah. garbage. By all accounts, he's supposed to be signed back for Catalans, hasn't he? Mm. That's, a, that's the word. Well, why did they let him go in the first place then? The replacement, the replacement with Mike Smith. Well, there you yeah, go. well, that's there you go. that's a recruitment. He wins the challenge. He helps win them challenge cup and bring back. Yeah, and it was outstanding for the Catalans and yeah. that Langy as well were brilling. You know that, that trying to have the other good good forward. So why did they let him go in the first place? He's gone, brought Mike Smith, who's useless, and then bring bring him back. Don't get it. Don't get they it. They need. They have got rid of. Obviously, Maguire's retiring. Atkin is leaving. Drinkwater's going. They've signed Abdul. Greenwood's going. Yeah, but my point is our half back. They've lost their three first choice, their, yeah, 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 their three yeah, primary yeah. half backs. So they've only signed one. Yeah. And why the signing came? They've got that young. Uh, is it Michael Lewis? Yes, so they do rate very highly. I've seen a player for Newcastle. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a good player. Good, good talent. But he's a young man. You know, we were told Cal uh, McClellan was going to be the next best thing. Yeah. And apparently, well, he's going, isn't he? He's because that's another youngster they've got. And look, these guys might come good. You know, we've seen it. Well, they're only with the company if they're allowed they to play. They need some experience. They need some experience. Yeah, but they're only going to get experience is by playing at that level. That's going to be going to get the experience. It's an unforgiving Where's place. Where's McClellan going? Uh, Where's he going? He's got a whole camp, probably. Is oh, is he? Yeah. Well, the same. Well, he's supposed to be the next best thing. That's yeah, and he can't get a game at Leeds. You know, Leeds team that struggle and basically. Well, that's, well, that's, 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 that's what we're going to say. They could become a vessel for a certain group of players from a certain place. Yeah. We know mm. it. So I, I, everyone can see I it. would be worried. I would be worried. I'm surprised, Neil Hudgel, uh, and this is where you look at owners. As an owner goes in terms of what he gives to the club, you couldn't ask for any more. You could oh, not absolutely. ask for any yeah, more. Yeah. But if I'm Neil Hudgel, and it's a bit like Ken David at Huddersfield, mm. I'm writing checks, I'm writing checks, I'm going, I mean, you must look at the team, Ken, and go, where the, is all my money going here? Because this is crap. Mm. And I'd be, if I'm, if I'm okay, I'm thinking the same. Where's my money going? Why am I not getting? I know they're in the hall and people, so you've got to pay a bit more to get them there. I pay. You, I understand you're paying a little bit more for some players, but their recruitment's been poor, and I think it's been poor again next year. And it's. But makes you know. Wonder. But you know what as well? When I when when I think of uh, Mr. Hulchu, because Mr. Hulchu, you know, he's been a Hulkia, not to chair, but Hulkia fan for many many years, right? Yeah. And and Mr. Hulchu's not daft. He knows what quality rugby league players what that club has had over the years, you know, from, from the Sullivan days and the Millwall days and Lane Casey, Dave Watkins and all that sort of thing from there. So he knows what quality is all about, you know, to play for, because it, it is a big club, Hulkies and Rovers. You can see the sponsorship they get from there and the fans from there. So what I don't understand is from Neil is, surely he can see, you know, if I'm looking ambition, certainly to get in the top five, these players aren't good enough. So I, I don't understand why he's allowing it, because well, look he, at know, the, he, look knows, he knows, he, he knows, he knows, he knows the game of Right. It, they're, the impression for me is Hull are trying to turn their squad around. They've big got some brothers, big, big names. Islanders. They've got a plan. Clearly, but whether that plan will work, they've got a plan. I'm not sure looking at who Hull KR are I'm not sure what the plan yeah, is. Yeah, I agree. And, I, and I, what, what are Hull KR right now? Mm. Fit, being six is not good enough for Hull FC, mm. sorry. Hull FC, not good enough to come six. Not acceptable. If it happens again next year, Radford, if he's there, will be down the road. Mm. I'll tell you that now. Right, their aim is to win. What's all okay, has it? Mm. To survive at the bottom of the Well, I know for sure we might. That's all we yeah, have, yeah, isn't it? I know for sure might, with, with people I speak to over there at Hulkey Island, what have you. When it, when it's, when it, you know, when it's announced with Kenny Dell, they always. They said to me, screw what we signed Kenny Dell for. Well, well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not anything to do with Hulkey's and Rovers, but my, my answer was quite simply was, I ain't got a, I ain't got a clue. Why, why are they signing him? What's the problem? Because he's not wanted by the 10th. I'm writing London off. Just say London go down. Don't win at the weekend. You know, whatever. For example, apologies London. Apologies London. All count us the bottom two. I'd be amazed if they're not in the bottom four next year. I just, I would be amazed both of them. 
because what is their aim? They're not. They are not going to win Super League anytime the thing, soon. The thing with Hull KR at the start of this year, I thought they recruited quite well. They brought in Garber. So did I. They so in did in I. And I said I thought they finished above Hull. We all wanted to be the top eight. We all wanted to be the top eight. And the players have not. They've not performed. Like Kane Lynette, good player, but they've just not. Been able to produce so it we, we all had Ulkey out above the black and whites. Mm. Yeah. That's what yeah, we had. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. I did as well. And after that, and after the first game of the season, we were, we were all the Raddles were under pressure because it's nothing from twelve, and they scored that late try to get the first yeah. two points. We thought, here, they're showing that character, they're showing that ball, and uh, you know that the, it, it could happen. But well, and then the league tables that tell lies, was it? They're not good enough. And they are, and one thing for sure, with the people who signed for next year, and rightly called Mr. Wilson. They are they are in a relegation battle now for 2020 well, with, the, with the recruitment what they've got. Well, well, they could be relegated, so yeah, it might not matter. <laughs> yeah, great facility though. It is a great it facility. Which is yeah. which is credit to them. And again, well, that's credit to the well, also as well, Mark. One thing for sure. When they got relegated Salford in the million pound game three years ago, everybody stood by them. If they get relegated this weekend. That won't be happening. They'll be down to three or four well, thousand people. That won't happen again. That's the no way. The question with these four teams, I mean, if London go down, they've not spent a lot, so they it won't be. They'll be fine if they go back. I to think they'll struggle. I think they'll have to rebuild. I think they've well, lost I think that a lot of good players. Yeah, but I don't. I don't think it's not going to be catastrophic. No, no, not no. I think they're fine. Hulk, fine Hulk 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 obviously experienced it a couple of years ago, so mm. they should. You know, they've got a good what seven, eight thousand fan base. Is it Wakefield or Huddersfield? Or is it Huddersfield, maybe? Because, I mean, Wakefield... I think Wakefield have got a robust enough fan base if they were to go down. I don't think they'd go down by much, would it? I think that's the thing. I think they would be okay. Yeah. I think they're a well-run club. They're not reliant on a rich benefactor. Yeah. You've got to ask the question, would Ken David back well, that's, all life yeah. in this championship? I'm not yeah. so sure he would. Don't know. And this is what the bigger picture is at stake, isn't it? At least we're on the ground again. Yes. Well, more but that was... Yeah. Tell you what, I can't, I can't wait for Friday. It's going to be great. It's going to, yeah. <laughs> Is it going to be? Is it going to be a sky helicopter going what, around the? Uh, I can't, what, I can't. what? With a check that they're going to go? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, lads. We Sorry. What's his name? What's a trap door, man? maybe, or something. I can't, I can't we wait. don't want to give you that. We, uh, uh, we, we love Brian Carney. We need Scott from uh, Red Zone just to come over and just just tell us what's happening. Yeah. He's great. Can we get Can we get Chris Kamara for a night? What <laughs> happened? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Oh, I don't know. I missed that. I don't know. I missed that. Yeah. So, so when we're talking about Friday, right, let's have a look here now, just a touch, a points difference with London, Hulk, yeah, the Giants, well, the yeah, Trinity out bad on it, you know, there from the, looks at Giants and Rovers and London. You think there'll be messages going on at the free game saying, well, that's a so, that's so and so, we need no. to score, we need to I score mean, so many points, well, we need to might, this, we need to that. at the end, but that will all depend on what London do. If London are 30 nil down at half time, yeah. then no. If London are 30 nil up at half time, yeah, this is what I'm saying. everyone will be getting the old calculator out there. Yeah, well, that's, that's what I'm saying. Well let's, just say, that. well, let's just say London, like they're going to look out on Friday, go 12 nil up after after 10 minutes. The message will be getting out to the figure. And so the situation is going to be, can they end up, can, are they going to be able to handle the pressure? The Huddersfield, well, the Huddersfield are playing Carlin. Can, 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 can I make a really huh? suggestion? I mentioned this earlier. As they say, they should drop a parachute with a parrot payment thing. Well then, Anthony, That's you hard. win the internet. Um, if you're playing, would you not want to delay your game? Oh, I've, got a he- oh, I've got a head knock. Oh, well, yeah. well, maybe not a head knock. Oh, calling a bomb scare. Oh, my legs fall <laughs> off. Oh, no, don't, don't do oh. that. But what I mean, <laughs> I'm it not okay. Okay. Oh, if you go down with an injury and you're down for five minutes and it just means that your game oh. for you might know what's going on a little bit longer than everyone else. I don't, I'm just merely speculating. I- what about Alex Walker? You know, Jason Wilson, you can be ruthless at times, can't you? Hey, that's what I'm yeah. thinking. If I'm at the bottom, I think you see it all the time in the football. It happens. Oh, there's a kick off, there's a congestion delay. Wakefield might have to delay the kick off because of the 50,000 oh, fans. Well, well, I, think, I think we saw it yesterday in the cricket. Oh, my glasses, I need I need some I need some uh, crying, you know. Yeah, yeah, the the contact lenses. Yeah, Wakefield, yeah, we need to stop the show. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, Wakefield have not delayed a kick off there since Derek Turner won the Challenge Cup back in 1968 when everything won. So, no, I wish we'd have won it in 68, but unfortunately it. the bloody league. You know what I mean? But, you, but you know where I'm coming from, you think the message is going to be sent on? Is it in London, they've got 12 up after 15. It is going to be fascinating. So well, well, it is. On. What we want is London, and this is no dis- I don't want Wakefield to get relegated. I, you know, I know Michael, I certainly don't want him to get relegated. But I do want London to survive. I do. So what you want is London to win. Narrowly, and then if one of Hulk and Huddersfield lose anyway, where can you say? And all the, all the people slag off the mobile rocket stadium, Bellevue to give her a uh, maiden name. 
She's back on the telly in her former glory tomorrow night, talking pictures, 10 o'clock. They're showing this sporting life again. It was on the Saturday night, repeating it tomorrow. I watched, the, I watched, um, I, well, I watched the first part of it. Bellevue looks exactly the same. It hasn't yeah, changed. Apart, the black and white. Apart from the standard yeah, of that, which they've yeah. got down now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, it's, it's on again. But the interesting thing, directors and owners back then were a lot better dressed. Yeah. They had nicer cars. And seemingly yeah. more corrupt as well. Yeah. But, so. Apparently. I'm just going to let you yeah, let that one go. Why you chose not to play a shot earlier? Why did you just yeah. let that one go? Yeah. Yeah. I just like the fact that it's like a bloody... Oh, look, look at the fight in the bar. Get signed up for yeah. the team. What do you mean more? What, what do you mean more? Corrupt the chairman all when I was ready. Oh, 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 oh,
the job James Ford's done. Easily coach of the year in the championship. And, and John Flatman as well. I mean, you know, manages that club really well. Um, I think they can do it. I think, uh, I think Ford, he's, he's a, bit of a, a bit of a coaching guru, uh, star on the rise, and I think they can upset Toulouse. Toulouse have had a couple of shock home defeats. They have, yeah. yeah. They're, prone, they're prone to sort of collapsing at times. Mm. So, but is this... <clears throat> This is a game you want to lose. Well, I'm going to say, do you actually want to yeah, win? Because if you win, you, yeah. go, to, you go to Toronto. Yeah. Chances are you may lose there. Then mm. you've got to come home, mm. play it, and if you win, you've got to go back no, to Toronto. Yeah. It's almost a double-edged sword, isn't it? Do you, take, do you bite the bullet and go, all right, we'll see if we can win at home next week, and then, I don't know, it's a weird one for me. I, mm. I don't know. I, I like York, you know, as you said, and Toulouse, I watched them play. I thought they were really good against Toronto. They obviously beat them earlier in the season. I thought they were good missing loads of players. I, I said it a while ago about Saints, I didn't think they'd win it. I also said, I'm not sure Toronto no, were. I'm not sure. No. When they're absolutely mm. under the pump, they've got some great players, but that doesn't mean they're going to win. You know, they had some great players last year, or good players, and they didn't win. It's a big ball job. It's, you know what this is? You know what Toronto are like in the, in the, in the playoffs? It's like Celtic getting into Europe, <laughs> right? And then that's, oh, that's oh, brutal. It's, that's all brutal. About, it's all about it's all about anti Toronto oh, bias. Yeah. So anti, no, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. Yeah. If they get in, I'd play on them in. I'd love. I've been. I'd love to go. I absolutely would love to go. Yeah. Um, but it is. It's all about that. And we see oh, with yeah. Celtic, they don't yeah. always come up with the goods, do they? Yeah. So to lose York, yeah, not too fuss. I think. I think they'll. I think one of those two will get to the grand final with Toronto. Um, I'll go home advantage just to lose to win it this week, uh, and then they'll have a trip to Toronto. What about uh, what about you, Rich? The key for me with Toronto is the fact they've got uh, Brian McDermott uh, on this game. I'm still at the points difference. To lose is is uh, massive, isn't it? Yeah. I'm going to go to lose, but again, it's a. It, <laughs> It's a fascinating game. I look forward to watching this one on, on Saturday, however it's broadcast. Um, three o'clock kickoff. What time do I start with? It's on the hour, I believe. Perfect. I can watch it at home. I can stream it on my telly. Um, to lose by six. Uh, Neil again sees Lee, mm. big spending Lee, taking on Featherstone, who were incensed and will be without <coughs> at least, what, two of their players who've been banned yeah. <coughs> this week? Um, what do we reckon? Lee Faf. Lose yeah. it goes all. Yeah, it's must be for both sides, isn't it? As you mentioned, their loser finishes their season for 2019. And, and there's no love lost between these two sides, is there? No love lost whatsoever. And uh, But the pressure's on. Um, yeah, both chairman, certainly, and, and Mr. Bowman and Mr. Campbell, they uh, they want Super League. You know, they want to make sure that, uh, certainly give him opportunity to get to the grand final of the championship from there. So it's do or die. No love lost between the two clubs. Both quality sides. I think feel as though. That Lee have a little bit more quality than Ferguson. Ferguson have been missing two of the players, as you've mentioned. Home advantage for Lee, big crowd behind them. They're under the pressure a bit better than Ferguson. We're going to lead by 10. John? Yeah, I, I've seen Ferguson a few times this year. I've really liked what they're doing. I think Cameron King, quality player. Um, obviously, they've got a lot of. Is he going to be fit? Because he I think, yeah, yeah I think he, he'll be he'll he'll He's got two trials that got injured. And he? I think also the. Um, Hearing a lot of good things about Connor Jones, the uh, the hooker who signed mid season, who's off to Salford next year. Yeah. Um, he's really one to watch. So I think I think Featherston can do it. Um, I think they're going to uh, they're going to pick Lee away from home. Rich, all oh, the pressure's on Lee, isn't it? They've spent all this money again, mm -hmm. signed all these players again, and I can't. I'm, I wonder what's going to happen afterwards when they don't get promotion again. I'm going to sign with Fev. I think there's no pressure on them whatsoever. They can just go there and. Uh, have a go, see what happens. Get accused of being anti Lee now instead of being anti Feb, so that's good. Uh, Featherston by eight. Just going to go for Lee. Um, tough game for Feb at the weekend. I think they tipped a lot into that. Can they go away to Lee uh, and win? I'm not overly sure, but Lee obviously had a tough game in Toronto. You know, how are they going to come back from that? Mm. <sighs> Big question, isn't it? I think Lee will just do it. I think Lee will go into week two of the playoffs. So that is uh, the championship. Any more for any more? Uh, uh... Some breaking news from uh, Ross Eppenstall of By the Balls podcast fame. The uh, London Broncos Hulk AR alleged racism incident yeah. was being referred 
for a further investigation, the match review panel looked at the incident, but nothing was clear, reports Ross on Twitter. So right. that uh, hangs over until that's that was, clear evidence. That was quite unusual watching the game because it was Robbie Mulhern making the complaint about a racist comment made at Mossy Bissau. Yeah. But he never named who actually said it or what you, what you could hear of the audio on Sky. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Right, let's start off in the Betfred Super League. Feel free to send your uh, guesses in, your <coughs> estimates of the scores. Uh, Wigan taking on Castleford. It's Thursday night. Uh, Wigan, a win, sees them second. Castleford, a win, guarantees their uh, Super League playoff place. What's going to happen at the DW, the legend? Plenty of playoff on both sides. There's purpose in all the fixes, isn't there, to be honest with you, from there. and. They said Wigan, yeah, they're the masters at this time of the season, aren't they? They're the holders, and they want the second spot. They want two bites of the cherry, and they're certainly with two home fixtures. Castleford, as we know, if they get the win, then they're certainly they're in the top five from there. But if Cass win, Gary, mm. and assuming Warrington and Salford also won, mm. Cass would go to the DW the week after in the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so <coughs> there you go. But, uh, <laughs> anyway, Cass won't be thinking that. They'll just be thinking they want to win just to make sure they make the five, don't they? You know. Uh, because I don't know what's going to happen with all the St. Helens, but he, we Wigan, the form up there in the home, they want to make it sure that uh, they're finishing second. I'm going to Wigan by 12. I'm a bit worried, but I agree with just about everything you said there. Um, Wigan have got a great record. You don't have to pity Cass. him, you know, just because of the cricket. Oh, him I pity him forward. every day anyway, but um, <laughs> no, they've got a great record at the DW against Cass. I think it's, what, seven... Seven or so wins in a row, 12 out of the last 13. Um, Cast were very good last weekend, but I just don't think they've got that consistent performance or, or to match what we're going to produce at the moment. So yeah, I think we're going to buy 12. So it's the anniversary of uh, closing Central Park I think last week. And of course, the first game that the JJB has was, mm. was Castleford going there and winning on the Stuart Raper all those years ago. Uh, I don't think they will do this week. They might do in the playoffs, but who knows? No, they won't. We're going to win that as well. Uh, Wigan will win this week, and they will win and secure second place by mm. eight points. I've said for two months now, I think we're going to go win the grand final. They've been on a great run of form. I just wonder if there's a down week somewhere. If there's one down week. Castle, uh, is it, am I right in saying Castle conceded four tries in four weeks? They're defending pretty well. I'm not saying they've had a lot thrown at them, but they're, they're defending pretty well. I think Cass will feel they've got to win. They won't. I mean, that'll be an awful 24 hours if they lose, waiting to see if Hull do win. And, you know, which LFC is going to turn up? You can never bank on it, can you? So I think they'll tip this in as this is a must win for Cass. I know it potentially is, but if Hull don't win, it isn't. So I just think Wigan might have an off week ahead of the playoffs. I think we're going to win Super League. I think Castle win it very, very tight. I like what I saw last week. If that cast turns up, they've got a chance. If Castle turned up at Saints, turn up, they're not going to win. I've got cast by two. Right, we will start off uh, yeah, that doesn't matter. with uh, okay. Hull against St Helens on Friday. Right, okay. Hull St Helens, where are you going on this one? Sir? Well, again, it's, it's a must win. Well, the black and white, and it all depends what sort of team St. Helens send over. And I would imagine, you know, the way Holbrook has done, uh, certainly last season and this year, that it'll, it'll send a strong side, and they want to go into uh, the week off with plenty of confidence, making sure that they're not defeated from there. And well, the black and white, it all depends how they turn up. It, it depends the attitude of Jake Collins, if Jake Collins going to play. If I were Radford, I wouldn't play him. If I'm honest with you, from there, I couldn't care less how big the game is. He doesn't deserve to be putting a black and white jersey on. I think there's a lot of content in that dressing room with him. Being in there, but Hull, if even if they bring their A game and St. Helens bring their B, yeah, B game, I think there's too much for Saints. I think it's even with the B game, I think St. Helens are going to turn up Hull over quite easily as well, to be honest with you. I don't think under the pressure. I'm going to St. Helens by 16. Yeah, I, I, I was there, I think it was six six weeks ago, St. Helens went to the to the KCOM and just dominated Hull. Um, you know, they're, they're good. Their own team off when they lost to Huddersfield a few weeks ago. I think there's going to be a lot of nervous pressure and probably a bit of anger around the stadium. Don't forget as well, if Cass did win, but this game is meaningless, yeah. isn't it? It's meaningless. Well, that's yeah, that's a good point. So um, I, I just think St. Helens, if you know, they're they're a class above 
Hull, they've got a lot to prove after after Wembley. Um, even if he rests a few players, they've got a squad there. You know, they're very impressive from the whole top to bottom. So I think St. Allen's by 12. Rich? The uh, media benches will be outnumbered by Hull FC media team to the rest of the neutral journalists who will be there. Because there'll be no one there. Because no one will care about this match. Everyone will be elsewhere. Um, St. Helens will win easily, 24 points. Hull have got the fourth worst defence. They're only 22 points better off defensively than London. They have been awful. I just, I cannot believe, right, that they didn't beat Huddersfield the other week and then <laughs> perform like they did. They're performing like a team that's jacked it in. Now, if the real Jake Connor stands up and comes and has a go, they've got a chance. But for me, I just don't think the belief's there. I don't think they believe they could win on, on Thursday at Cass. I think they've jacked in. I think they're on their holidays. I think it's going to be a sad way to go out for like some mini cello and Manu. I think they're going to get whipped. So I'll go. I'll go St Helens by. I'll go sixteen. I think I'm being kind there as well. I think all will get beaten. Uh, we will see. Uh, if they do get beaten, uh, they don't miss, uh, miss out on the playoffs. All those people that tweeted me earlier, quoting me saying they won't get in the playoffs. Please retweet those tweets, won't you? It's, uh, I really enjoy it when you send them when your team's doing well. Uh, right, the other game is Leeds Warrington. Uh, Warrington need a win. They need to win. Simple as that. Mm-hmm. Um, they could still come second. They could win and drop to fourth. It's a tough one. This Leeds. They don't beat teams in the in the top top six by mm-hmm. and large. So they're going to win this week. Well, Warrington certainly be taking a, a close note on Wigan's performance. Won't it? Wigan win the yeah the seven the second. So Warrington. Their incentive certainly to get the win against Leeds is to, to making sure they finish third, isn't it? You know, and, you know, I think we I think we're all in agreement that Salford will maybe put plenty of points on Ulkis to go over. So the Wolves need to come to Leeds on Friday and get the win and get the win by a few points. Leeds, yeah, they'll want to finish on a high. They'll want to go into the pre season, yes. We finish on a high from there. We know it's been a disappointing season and give something for the fans to look forward to to twenty twenty. But you've made the point, Mike, they've not really done very well against the top sides in Super League from there, so Leeds have been maybe looking to pull a festival of Rubber League out from there, but Warrington we just maybe a little bit more class. I think Dow Clark at this moment in time is up there as one of the best players in Super League. He could be the big difference. I don't think there'll be much in it. Don't like going against Leeds, but I tipped him last week to beat Salford by 14. It was absolutely massive on there. <laughs> and uh, as, I, as I get reminded every bloody week, to be honest with you. But uh, yeah, I've got to go for Warrington. Doesn't give me any joy to say anything, but I'm going Warrington by 10. Yeah, I, th- I think Warrington, you know, with looking at the playoff places, they want to finish as well as they can. Leeds were, were decent against Salford. There was a lot of it, effort and commitment, but just in attack, didn't really mm-hmm. have what it took to break Salford down. I think it'll be a similar story on Friday. Warrington by eight, uh, and a nice, lots of space in the media benches uh, for myself. And the food as well, a great egg. No, I might go there, he said. Um, I always regret not backing Kieran Cunningham to score the last try at Mosley Road in the two games he scored the last tries at Mosley Road. But I won't be wasting my money on JJB this week. I think he did his thing last week. Hope he gets a good send-off. Um, but I don't think he will, because I think all the fans will have disappeared because Warrington are going to put them to the sword. Blake Austin needs to get some more legs back into him. He was quiet last week against Wakefield, wasn't he? But he was able to be quiet because the rest of the team were able to pull him along. I've still let him be flake. Um, which is a shock. Oh, we should have given one of them, wouldn't yeah. we? Yeah. Uh, I've got one in the cap. Well, England's Blake Austin. It's difficult. England's Blake Austin, yeah. Um, Warrington by 20. I've got a look at this, right? I, I spoke, no, listen, listen. I, 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 spoke, I spoke to Steve Price after the game, and he was asking about the Salford score. They are aware mm. of what they need to beat Salford's score. The first 40 minutes on Friday was reminiscent of earlier in the season. If they turn up and play like that, they will blow Leeds away. No, absolutely not. Leeds have got their awards on. Tonight, you know, their, their season's over. Their, their season's over. They've got nothing ended. to play for. Um, they need to go out on a high to appease the fans. Mm. A, a win would do Richard Agar the world a good as well. It yeah. really would. You know, they don't win and people go, oh, Agar, the rubbish, blah, blah. You know, it's Agar's fault, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, I think Warrington will win. I think Warrington will win easily. I think it could be a long night for Leeds. Um, 
Job done for Leeds. I think mentally you can forgive them losing last week because they they done they climbed Everest the week before. They secured safety. I don't think they'll win. I think Warrington will win quite nicely. Uh, I'm going Warrington by 24 because I think if <laughs> Gary, you've got to look at it right. You've got to look have at a it. Sense if, if Salford are winning 30 nil against Hull KR, Warrington are going to have to score some points, or they're going sudden death football the week after. They're gonna, they're gonna, they do not want to finish fourth, Warrington. They want to finish in the top three. They may have to win big. Right, let's move on. I would hate Leeds. Oh. He said that. Exactly. I might agree, but he said it. Uh, uh, right, okay, moving on, moving on. Right, it's men. Uh, Huddersfield must win, <coughs> although they could lose and stay up against Catalans, or they could lose by a lot and go down. Uh, so, <laughs> where are you going? Oh, well. The Giants surely cannot lose this game the way that uh, the Catalans are. They're pathetic, they're disgraceful, they could care less about the jersey uh, that the Catalans players. As I've said now for the last eight weeks, they're on the big King Edwards, they're on the Factor 6. I think now, to be honest with you, they're that, uh, they're that nicely tanned. They might be on the Factor 2, the Catalans players, the way they've been. This is easy for the Giants, as we, as we said, what? 20 minutes ago, if they could have picked anybody, they would they would rather pick the Catalans around the West Wales Raiders, to be honest with you from there. I think this is easy for the Giants. I'm going to the Giants by 24. You're one of the Huddersfield, Huddersfield greats. Have they called you in for a pep talk this week, players? I don't think it was greats. <laughs> no. G-R-A-T. I think they said it's someone Huddersfield hates. <laughs> <Is that what laughs> I had a big fee for it. No, I... Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And they're still I looking for the receipt. I can't I can't tip Calens with any with any faith. So I think, obviously, there's a lot of nerves and tension at... At Huddersfield, but I think I think they will win. I think they'll uh, they'll tough it out. They'll grind a victory. Uh, Huddersfield by eight. In two thousand and one, Wakefield stayed up by beating Salford mainly because Bobby Goulding got sent off in the greatest thing he ever did for Wakefield. It was hilarious. Uh, we had a team of complete rubbish in those days. Well, some rubbish. Oh, and Joey Barton got sent off against Man City. Man City won the league. Brad Davis was good at Gary Price. And uh, Willie Poaching. Oh, we had a few good players at Gareth Ellis. Uh, but, on that same day, across the M62 from Salford in Huddersfield, they were relegated, coached by Tony Smith and captained by Steve McNamara. And I think Steve McNamara is going to get uh, Huddersfield relegated this time, though, because they're no good, are they? Um, Huddersfield by six. Huddersfield win. The game plan will be simple, basic... The worry I have about Huddersfield, I don't think they can blow Catalans away. And I think if Catalans are in it, they might have a go. I could... I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I'm going to go Catalans. I just, oh. I just, I just, <laughs> the pressure. Oh. The pressure. Tires and does the does he's, on oh. he's on oh. Huddersfield. That is absolute is garbage. Huddersfield. Mark Wilson, Giants. that is the worst call you have made since we've been doing this show. Yeah, How have we been doing this? It's the worst call I've made since last that week. Is that, is that is garbage. That is garbage. Well, yeah, well yeah, defend Catalans. How they could beat Giants on fire. That's rubbish. Because I worry. That is garbage. And I know Huddersfield went to Ulcar and grafted out a win. Great performance. And they can do that. But I think the way to beat Catalan is get 18 0 up early and they'll chuck it in. I think if it's 6 2 after half an hour, they'll go, oh, we might, well, really, we might as well try. That's all I'm saying. And I think then it becomes we're not a bit. They're trying, they're not doing nothing. Well, we'll see you all when we're going to Catalan. Yeah, you've the sauce. Shut up. Uh, right, so that leads us to Salford, where seven on the spin Salford are taking on the bottlers, Hull Kingston Rovers, <laughs> who can't win. Now, they haven't won back to back games. Under Tony Smith. So the good news is they lost last week, so there's a chance they might win this week. Well, but hmm. even Tony Smith admitted the occasion got the better of the players. Now, I think it's better that they're away from home. Right. I think that gives them a chance. Have Salford got one eye on the playoffs? No, because I think they want to finish in the top three. What do you think? Well, what you just said there, the comment about Catalan's winning has been absolutely bonkers. It's the worst comment you've made since we've been doing this show now for the last five or six years. So I'm going to ask you the question... Are you maybe contemplating saying that Oakies and Rovers can beat Salford? I bet you do, but anyway, Salford, yeah, they'll be, um, they're ready for this and they're ready to put a few points on. They know exactly what they've got to do. What they say, 14, 16 points at this moment in time away from uh, from Warrington. They'll be looking to put stacks of points on against OKR. I don't think OKR can handle the pressure on uh, Friday nights. 
so full of goal there with plenty of uh, expression looking to put plenty of points on, on OKR like I said it's been easy for Salford I, can't, I think they're just going to put a performance in to say we're ready for the semi-finals I'm going to Salford by 32 points wow <laughs> so I'll <laughs> get an apology yeah. next week won't I definitely bring it on the ashes was that yesterday. It's Brian Scully's <laughs> brain. Um, <laughs> I think Salford, yeah, I, everything to play for Hulk Hour, but Salford, very, very impressive on, on Friday night. That, that It seems like they're already playing playoff football now. Um, just the way that the halves are working, Nile Edwards coming into the line, Joey Lussick off the bench gives him a great, a lot of spark. You just, every week he scores the same try, that burrow out for five minutes. He's done about 10 or 11 times this season, he's, people still can't stop him. So I think Salford by 12, and they're just going to keep this, this run going. Rich, Salford. It happened, what was it, three years ago now? The million pound game? Where Hulking Art actually bottled it. Oh, they, That's they the found biggest goal the job in the history of rugby league. They found a way to lose a yeah. game. That if they'd have lost, if you'd have said this is what's going to happen, you're that's impossible. Yeah. That's impossible. That's never going to happen. He and Craig Murdoch were the greatest call I've ever heard on radio. It was absolutely superb. I should dig that out and stick it on a video. Um, I think we can do whatever we want. Don't make this anymore. Um, so they're going to win again. And. They are going to win because they know they want to get two bites of the cherry at Old Trafford. Uh, Salford by 18. Might not be enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've got a win. They've got a win. Oh, if you say okay, They've got a win. I'm off. <laughs> They've got a win. If you say okay, I'm but off. It's the second worst or third worst defence by 17 points against the second best attack. I think Sinel is just ticking that. along. Salford are due a defeat. The Lord of Rogers just said the due a defeat, but I just think the pressure will be too much. I think Ulcar have been here before. I think Salford will grind it out. There's almost no pressure on Salford. They're actually, the worst case scenario, they'll be at home in the playoffs mm. next week. That's the worst case scenario. I think I do think they'll win begrudgingly for Ulcar. Uh, I'll go Salford by 13. Right, the big one, and this is the big one. Wakefield against London, Friday night. No, winning, you're in. Winning, you're in, lads. Winning, you're in. This is all about pressure, and uh, I think it was around about four weeks ago when Chris Chester says, "Well, we only need to win one game." This and, was the one they needed to win. Well, well, this is the one they're thinking about, aren't they? We only need to win one game, but also as well. They didn't anticipate that London would be on the same points. No, they, they didn't. They, they, I can imagine all th three of those around them at the bottom of them were safe. Exactly. Yeah. When they all won the other way, they're going, oh, yeah. that's so yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. So now, the pressure's on even more. The pressure is on even more. And it's not London. London enjoying the pressure. They know exactly what they're going to do. They know exactly how they're going to play. Exactly how they're doing all season. Say what I saw last week. They are loving this pressure. It can be seen from... From the coaches, from the subs, from the main players, the main players that are playing themselves. I don't think Wales will handle this pressure. I don't think they will handle it on Friday. If London, if London can take the lead like they did against Oki Sarovas, we know that Wakefield crowd. They are going to be in, they are going to be in, they are going to be dogging, they are going to be dogging. Oh, London, what? Oh, London, what? London, what? London, London are going to be loving it, London are going to be loving it. I don't think. I don't. I don't think. You might get the team and Yeah, we'll get, we'll get, get sponsored by Pedigree Chum soon. Then. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, I don't think we're under the pressure. I think London will enjoy that environment on Friday. I'm going London by ten. Tim's not happy. Please don't tip London to go. No. Sorry, Tim. Job's I'm going London by ten. Job's knackered. I'm, I'm a bit worried because I'm a grim. Again, I think. I think London just, they won't throw on the tail, they just, they're never beaten, they, just a remarkable team spirit, and I, essentially there is no pressure, because no one expects them to do anything, they're away from home, absolutely, it's, a, all the heat is on, they're enjoying from, the pressure, yeah, job. they're enjoying yeah. it, Danny Ward just, he gets the best out of his players, I think, I think London by two, Rich, I've seen this game before, 2001 we beat Solver to stay up, 2002 we beat Warrington to stay up, 2000 and Six, the infamous original million pound game, beat Castleford, stayed up. 2015, 
the original original million pound game, when James Lowe's pretty much gave me sign excuse by saying this shouldn't exist. All those idiots for the last three years who've said, oh, livelihoods are on the line, how can the players cope with the pressure? We'll see what you've got now, four sets of players with the pressure of knowing that they're going to sign for another team anyway because they're good enough and if they're not going to sign for a team in the Championship, and it's their fault that they're not good enough. I actually want London to win because I want to see one of the other two teams go down. Uh, we're not supposed to say because I'm not a journalist. So I can say Hold on, you want at least two win last week. Now we want to wait for them to lose. What? Yeah. Well, because I'd rather see one of the other two. I don't want to have more sauce there. You are. Right? I think you need to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, however, he, he wants wait for the lose, and you think Catalans are going to win? You two have been on the sauce. How well because you two? I I said in round one, and I said in round whatever it was, Wakefield would win against London, and I was wrong. But I'm going to say Wakefield will win against London. Last two times I said by 20 points. It can't be by 20 on uh, Friday, can it? Um, wait for by eight. But I hope London win. If the other two... Win. We've, had, we've had a 27, 28 game marathon to get to this point. <laughs> can London, can, right, can I, can can I just say, can I say this before you think? Uh, Take your friendship out and Mr Carter and Mr Chester. Just be honest with you. Yeah, no, I'm yeah. going to be. I'm yeah. going to be. Yeah. Uh, uh, we are objective on this programme. Of course. Um... But yeah, I was the one cheering when London scored last week. That ain't what Michael Carter went to hear. But um, London, they've done unbelievable to get this way, right? There are two outcomes. Either the drama continues and this one goes right to the last minute. Or London play that I did it all in the 30 nil down inside 20 minutes. I desperately hope that doesn't happen. I hope it goes to the end. And I've said it. I hope London win. I don't wonder why. I don't wait for it to get really good, but I want London to win. I think it's a fitting end to the story that no one ever thought would have happened. I, I think it'll be the, one of the great. I, I them staying up would almost for me be better than Leicester winning the, the, the league. Honestly, it would. I think it'd be that good an achievement. Can they do it? I don't know. Wakey really played well at Hull KR. They played okay against Wigan, and they were okay last week, but only in the second half. First half they got behind and they were in trouble. I'm going to go London by one. I'm going to go London golden, golden point. point. I think it's. I honestly, I, nil, nil I can honestly see this right being. It's either all over and it's wakey win, get in front and the pressure's off. They've won. Or London keep fight. They found a way to win that game the other night when they they were relegated. They were, gone, they were yeah. relegated and they found a way to win. I'm not sure wakey. They had that win at OK. I think mentally they thought they were safe. They're not. They've had two tough games. This is another one. I'm going to London. I think London will win. And I, I, all right, and I, I think Hull KR are going to get relegated. What about you? Who are you going for? You you think Huddersfield are going to win? I think Hull KR. You think Hull KR will lose? I think London will win. Do you? Yep. So who's going down then? I think Huddersfield will Hull KR. Okay. I think, well, I've said Wayfield will win, so London will go down low. Yeah, but okay. That's us done. Um... Of course, we say that, but next week when John's got to speak to uh, Robert Elston before the playoff launch, he says, yeah, we're having 14 teams in this year. I don't know what you're worried about. Just did it to get produce it from Sky. He should do that. The pressure's getting, the pressure's starting. The pressure. Trying to the pressure start his t-shirt. Yeah, yeah, t-shirt. t-shirt. No one noticed it until now. Oh, Can't make him join him. Oh, Australian <laughs> cricket. I'm going to take a ban on that. Four show. game ban. Four game ban. Scully says that all the Aussies are our... Exiles or whatever, so they're all you know, they're all English anyway. Yeah, you're all our ten pound bombs, that's what you are. Uh, ten pound bombs. I'm doing, I'm doing uh, the Gary Schofield Australian history. <clears throat> Feel free to abuse us on social media when we get it wrong, mate. Come on, London! Come on, London! <laughs> Is that it? I've stopped the podcast on that note. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Done.